This episode is brought to you by Will Anderson's new comedy show. I nearly said special. It is special. It's, it's a special show. He's a special boy with a special That's show. That's right. Uh, Will Informed, which we'll talk about in a bit. It's at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. That's right. And Marine Layer. Oh. Which is a special show of wonderful clothes. <laughs> it's a special show, a website, but we call them special shows <laughs> yes. of wonderful clothes. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News Shooting up your butthole The Weekly Planet, The Weekly Planet Welcome back everybody to another another episode of The Weekly Planet Bats, we're in a new space I've immediately... <sighs> It's not a good omen, is what I'm saying. No, it's the best omen. <laughs> but weekly planet. No, that's we're talk- what they say. That's that's what my grandmother always used to say. If you if you mess up the intro of a podcast in your new podcasting space the first time you do it, you're going to mess up the po- the podcast intro every day for the year. Okay. Yeah. Is it like breaking a leg in stage as well? It's a it's a good thing when you're yes. like break your legs. Yeah. Now, the, the, <laughs> d- traditionally, it's um. Hey, hope your Patreon gets cancelled. <laughs> That's the, that's the podcast equivalent okay, of Break right. a Leg, yeah. Uh, this is the show where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me as always is my co-host Nick Mason. We're in the new space. That's right. So it's not finished yet. We don't have a, we don't have a video related set no. yet, but we've decided to move the stuff into the new space. So we've got a whole new dynamic. For the purposes of sound quality and sitting under an air conditioner. That's absolutely right. Yeah. So we've got, we've, we've got a lot of space to the side mm-hmm. and ordinarily you'd be at the desk and yes. I'm on a couch. But now the desk has been, there's, there's no couch. The desk has been positioned lengthways mm. and we're across it. Yeah. Like we're <laughs> not a, across it as in we know what we're doing. No, absolutely <laughs> not. But we are, we're, you, I'm at one end and you're at the other end. We're like two, we're like a, we're like a really rich couple that don't get along anymore. We're at two ends of the long dining it's table. like when Bruce Wayne invites Vicky Vale over for dinner. Yes. Good reference. Thank I liked you. it. We're back on yes. track. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so it's it's a whole new dynamic. So we're we're directly across from each other now. I trying not to look directly at you. And also, the dog doesn't know what's what. <laughs> yes. The dog has no couch to leap on anymore. No, she no attempted, frames of reference. She attempted to lick the carpet like she does with every yeah. cloth item we own. <laughs> but sometimes Where she is sit, she? Is she under you. Yeah, she's under my feet now. Okay, yeah. She's, she attempt, She was sitting in the sun for a little bit. So yes. she's got space. She's got she stuff knows what to she's do. Doing. Yeah. Anyway, I feel good about this. Me too. Yes. Do you feel good about this though? Hello. Star Wars news. No. Okay. <laughs> Why would I? This isn't easing me into the new space at all. So what, I think this is good news regardless of whether you're a Star Wars fan this or not. Sh- you should have just, you should have just softballed me in with like <laughs> just stuff that I'm already comfortable with. You'd okay. be like, hey, did you hear that about something about comic books from the 90s? And I've been like, I have heard I that. I'm that. very comfortable with those <laughs> yes. things. But I think this is good news. Here's some Savage Dragon news. It's still going. It's still going somehow. Uh, Taika Waititi. This is good news all round. Is Mm. voicing IG-88 in The Mandalorian. Or one of the versions of IG-88 because in Legends there's like at least four. Yeah, right. Uh And But maybe he's the oddball New Zealand one. (laughs) Or maybe he's just a, yeah. Maybe just regular IG-88. What do you think about that? Like Korg's voice but it's IG-88. I think you could put a fun little spin on it. Yeah, I agree. I think there's probably like a... I am, I absolutely reckon there'd be like an IG eighty eight Bible. Like every character would have right. a Bible, and it'd be like he he acts like this, and he reacts like this, and he talks like this. And I think he's gone. Okay, I can take that, and I can yeah. do a little spin on it, which I think would be good. He's talked about before because he has, is directing an episode or a couple of episodes uh-huh. that you can't take the humor as far as you would with say Thor. There's like yeah, Star right. Wars humor, and you, you we hear this all the time from people about the Last Jedi. Like there's definitely a line, and I believe there is. I don't think you can just do anything. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. And he said it's it's the line is different than a Marvel movie. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Right. Yeah, exactly. It can't be. It can't slip over in this kind of nod, wink, self parody kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. Are you looking forward to seeing this this broom of a robot? Yeah. Clanking about. I guess so. I'd yeah. like to see. Well, I mean, did he? Did he get any action beats in any of the other movies? No, he, he stood did. there. And he then, stood there. <laughs> and then I think his corpse shows up in Return of the Jedi oh in like boy. the junk room down uh-huh. the bottom. Yeah. So, because right. I guess at the time the the technology wasn't available for him to do anything. Absolutely because not. Because he was again, he was just a <laughs> was there was it, was it was just a static figure. It didn't move. It didn't I move think exactly, also yeah. he's a he might even be a piece of like the bar in the first Star Wars. Oh, and they've they've repurposed like their it. head is like yeah, right. a is like a like a an urn plunger. or something. Yeah, yeah right. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, they just used every, anything and everything yeah, right. in those uh-huh. movies. So yeah. yeah, I think this is great. 
And it's a fun little picture. There's also a Mandalorian Iron Man helmet just sitting there, which is oh, also, that's uh, cool. you know, not, not relevant, but it's not relevant at but all. It's, but it's cool. <laughs> yeah. It's a cool thing. It is cool. Here's a cool thing though. I'm ready. Do you love Bill is and... Is it us because the air conditioning is on? Yes. yes. Well, I just turned it just a fan now because it's, I don't right. know. We've got to get used to these settings, Mason. <laughs> This is mostly going to be us changing settings on the air conditioner, <laughs> yes. isn't it? I'm like, do we leave yeah. the door open? Do we close? Should we close the door? Shoes off or shoes like... on? Shoes... Looks like a shoes off space. Shoes off space, side yeah. it looks like. Yeah. yeah. I, you said, which side do you want? Mm. And this may change in the future, but I wanted the side where I can see both, yes. both doors. Yes. <laughs> I wanted born identity style. I want to know where all the exits are. You want to know what's coming. Case. And also, I want to see, if it raining, to, if it raining, I'm going to go get my shoes. Good point. Mm. Great point. Yeah. Uh, Bill and Ted's. I've actually written Bill and T's. But uh, oh, Bill and Ted... We all know what you mean. Yes, Bill and Ted 3, Face the Music, has a release date of August 2020. Okay, uh, cool. Cool. Yeah. I love those movies. Did you watch that little video? I didn't. I, no, I also didn't. It's one of those things where like, Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah, right. I, I want to see it. I will see it. Yeah. I'm very excited, but uh-huh. no. Yeah. It, it showed up a whole bunch of times on Twitter for me, and I just was like... They're, they're there and they're making Bill and Ted-esque gestures and yeah. they'll get to that eventually and I didn't. And they've aged spectacularly. They're probably saying dude a lot. I hope they are. One of the writers for the original Bill and Ted, he put up on Twitter a whole bunch of like pre-Bill and Ted like notes and sketch ideas. Oh, I've seen some of and, that, yeah. And it was really kind of fascinating. Mm. Apparently they were, they were characters that he and a friend of his performed sort of live on stage a oh, bunch really? of times. Okay. And then they were like, we should write a movie. And then they were like, let's bring Bill and Ted in, yeah. into this kind of thing. And originally Hitler was going to be in it. <laughs> so, But they went with Genghis Khan instead? With Genghis Khan. They went with Still Napole- a murderer, but... I'm... They went with Napoleon instead. Okay, right. Because he's, yeah. he's, you know... He's more fun and he's short. He's more fun and, he, and he's further away <laughs> yes. in time to laugh at. So Yeah, that's you know. it. Yeah, But yeah, that's kind of fascinating. I cannot remember the guy's name, but if you look that up, that'll be... I remember seeing something about the original Time Machine, but I don't remember what that was. I can't remember. But I love the idea of the time machine. <laughs> They've clearly gone the anti-Doctor Who of yeah, like, right, you just uh-huh. cram into a box. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I really like the second one. I know that's not, it's probably more beloved now than it was at the I time. I think so too. But yeah. I think it's great. It's got some yeah. really interesting ideas yes. in it. And it's not just the same thing of like, let's grab so-and-so through history. I agree. It's yeah. the afterlife and robots and, yes. and doubles and whatever. Yeah, it's, uh-huh. it's great. It's really good. Uh, but if we're talking Keanu Reeves... Uh, oh, the newest trailer for John Wick 3. Jonathan Perineum. Wick. That's right. Uh, we will never say the correct name. Never, ever. Why would we? Mm-hmm. Uh, John Wick's not real. He can't get us. So That's we right. can say whatever we want. Exactly. So these are We pa- have a dog too. Yeah, we're gonna He can't do- get too mad at us. My dog would be torn in half by John Wick's dog. <laughs> it would be <laughs> such a short fight. Uh, these take place over the course of a week, I guess, these movies? What, one, two, and three? They, well, they must because one and two are back to back. And yeah, then this true. is when he escapes, when everyone's oh, after yeah, him and he's right. like, I'm going to kill everybody. I'll do it. I'm John Wick. Wow. And it's a tough ma- week. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And there's the Matrix guns, lots of guns reference. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. But he's not the one who says that in the Matrix. Or does he? No, he is. No, he does, yeah. <laughs> he does. It sounds weird in another movie, right? It really when he does, says it, yeah. I'm like, that's very jarring. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be, I'm, I hope, hopefully the follow-up is he's like, guns, lots of guns. And the guy's like... We have two guns. <laughs> I have this backpack. It's got two guns in it. That's all I can get for you. Sorry. No bullets. I know too. you're expecting more guns. Yeah. You'll have to buy your own bullets <laughs> or fashion your own. Yeah. So I kind of was on board late to John Wick. I came, I think my kid was born that year or something. So I didn't I see thought you were going to say, well my after. kid introduced me to John Wick. Yeah. He loved it. I don't think I've seen either of these of the movies, actually. The first two. I've definitely seen this one of the movies. I have also not seen either of them at the yeah. movies. How do we miss them? I don't know. Were they big in Australia? They were late, I think, actually. Right, At okay, least yeah. one of them was late. Uh-huh. Uh, so, yeah. Mm. But, uh, look, if, if... And, look, this is probably isn't a you know, good way to go about things, but if it's the same as the other two, action-wise, yeah. that's good enough for Pretty me. Pretty good, yeah. Just a guy running through a nightclub... He, he punches you with a with a gun, then he shoots you with the gun. Shoots you with a gun, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You get hit with a gun, and you're like, "Oh, thank God! Oh, what a relief!" <laughs> he had that gun, and I, I thought he was going to shoot me. With the ow, my brains! He, he, uses, he <laughs> did shoot me with a gun. Did shoot me in the end. Okay, I've written here. Is this anything, right? Okay. Dog Wick. It's a spin-off. Yes. It's just the dog, and he goes through the animal underworld. It's called Dog Wick. Called Dog Wick. <laughs> I like it. Uh, or John Dog? <laughs> That's probably okay. not as good. Dog Dog? <laughs> it's called Dog Dog. John Wick, but it's his dog. Uh, what about that? <laughs> okay, so so wait. 
Is he... Okay, so I, I like the idea yep. a lot. I like the idea a lot. Is he a dog with guns? Or is he just a dog attacking other dogs? I don't think that's that. real. Because that's real gruesome. That's different, isn't it? Yeah. That's a different... See, I don't want a cats and dog situation yeah, right. where they're all... You know, it's all CGI no. cats doing cartwheels yeah. or whatever. How about this, though? How mm. about John Wick takes his dog to the dog park? Yep. And he has to, and John Wick then has to go and do, like, get a hot dog or something at the hot dog cart. Mm. And then in the meantime, John Wick's dog sees some sort of dog related injustice yeah. relating to the other dogs. Yeah. But it's not like they're not, they don't talk or anything. Okay. This is a silent film. Okay. This is like, remember, you know, you know, at the start of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, there was that weird baby short you remember yeah that? and that Just, baby was really al pacino or something yes it's, this is gonna be like a warner it. brothers short at, yeah. at the at the front of john wick four yeah it's called dog wick <laughs> or john dog or dog dog no dog dog <laughs> but then he so then it's sort of like he has to like there's no there's no overt violence okay except at the end when he tears another dog's throat well, out have to. but he sees another dog bullying yeah. he sees one dog bullying all the other dogs yeah and he's like well this will not stand because i'm john wick's dog yeah. dog wick <laughs> John dog, oh, dog, dog, dog. <laughs> Great. I would like it to be also like. Are you familiar with Phineas and Ferb? Sort of. They've got a. They've got a pet. It's a cartoon. They got a. <laughs> they got a pet platypus. Uh huh. And it doesn't do anything. Yes. But it's a secret agent. Yeah, so right, it goes uh-huh. down a little tube and then it's got a little hat and it, yeah. and it goes and stops a world-ending plot. So while they're doing like Jughead's dog, hot dog. Is that what Jughead's dog, hot dog Sometimes, does? Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Maybe a Perry the Platypus Jughead dog dog spinoff. Yes. Get it all he's jug, Jughead's got a tar- speaking of the TARDIS, he's got a TARDIS like okay. dog house. It's got all sorts of stuff in it. All sorts of stuff in yeah, it. Yeah, Man, Archie it. goes everywhere, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's right. I mean Jughead's busy being in the time police, obviously. I understand he's in the that. Time police. I know what I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> I, I I didn't just hear that for the first time now. Okay, good. I know I know things that you know too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Anyway, dog wick. I'm on board with dog <laughs> okay, wick. Good. So I, I reckon eventually like the bully dog is gonna end up pushed into the po- a pond or something. Okay, like that. cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Just some lighthearted fun. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, gotcha. And he's maybe a poodle, so all his hair goes all weird. <laughs> and his owner's like, come on, you, what are you, you're in trouble now. <laughs> yeah. That's the that's his comeuppance. His owner like says you're a bad dog, which is the worst thing you can be that's as a dog. the worst thing you can be, yeah. yeah. Uh, here we go, new trailer. Lots of, lot of trailers this week. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, right. Uh, Quentin Tarantino's ninth film. Ooh, yeah. we know that because it says it's his ninth film yeah. the trailer. I guess I would have thought more or less. I think the only one I haven't seen is Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown's Which good. Is, yeah. Should get into that. The only reason I haven't, because he didn't write that one. So I'm like, yeah, how, right. does it, how does it feel comparatively to the other ones? Do you know? I mean, you've seen it. so I have seen it. And About yes. the same. Okay, I'll <laughs> take that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, I like this trailer quite a bit. Yeah. So it's, it's the golden age of Hollywood where mm. nobody could act and everything was bad. <laughs> That's not true. Uh-huh. A lot of movies were bad, yeah. but the ones that stuck around are mostly good. Do I you guess. buy that Brad Pitt is Leonardo DiCaprio's Absolutely not. stunt double? Not no. in for a second. <laughs> no, right. If anything, it's the other way around. Yeah, uh-huh. And look, obviously it's Leonardo DiCaprio, but yeah. it's the other way around. Yeah, right. <laughs> but who's the better actor, would you say? I think it's DiCaprio. You're probably right. Like, I think, I think, I think Brad Pitt is underrated as an actor. Yes. But I think DiCaprio is still a better actor. I think DiCaprio has probably tried more di- and different things. Yes. I mean, they've both done old man makeup. That's true. That yep. cannot be disputed uh-huh, yep. when DiCaprio was Howard Hughes and mm. Brad Pitt was. They've both whatever. done heisty style movies. Yes, that's Catch true. Catch Me With You Can. And I love Catch, Catch Me With You Can. Good movie. Catch Me If You Can. It's a great movie. Mm. Uh, so. Do we get much of the plot of this movie? What's happening? No, well, I know there's a Charles Manson. I can bring okay. up the synopsis. How okay, about please. that? But okay. Charles Manson, I know, plays a, a role. Yes. Should be called Once Upon a Time in Bloody Hollywood, am I right? <laughs> That's really weird. Yeah. It's 1969 Los Angeles. Nice. Television star Rick Dalton and his longtime stunt double make their way around a changing industry that, ha- that they hardly recognize anymore. That's interesting. That's an interesting twist. No, it's, it's an interesting change of direction. For mm. Quentin Tarantino. I mean, he's sort of lent very heavily into Westerns yeah. recently. I'm kind of glad he's out of that. Yeah, me too. I didn't like the Hateful Eight. I didn't hate it. Uh-huh. I didn't hateful hate it. Oh, yes. It. You didn't hateful hate it. Yeah. Uh, apparently, it also features a large ensemble cast, which we see in the likes of Margot Robbie and other people. Uh, it weaves multiple storylines in a tribute to the final moments of Hollywood's golden age. Oh. Yes, there you go. So this is your... And also, I like the inclusion of like the Bruce Lee... I'm like, that guy's Bruce Lee's dead on. <laughs> yeah, right. And I love that joke about... But guess what? It's Brandon Lee. What? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 
That's how they got it so accurate. That's crazy. Yeah. But I like that joke about my hands are lethal weapons. I'll go to jail if I kill <laughs> cool, somebody. Yeah. Like if anybody kills somebody, they go, go to jail. jail. It's yeah. manslaughter or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. But we get some action. We get some. I don't think we've had a Brad Pitt choreographed fight scene like that before. Because yeah. Fight Club is just men just clashing into each other. That's and true. Yeah. Punching each other in the nose or whatever. Yeah. But uh, no, I I think I'm I'm really excited for this. I know there's been a slight shift in Tarantino films since his longtime editor. Whose name I can't remember. She died a few oh, yeah, years back, right, and that huh? was maybe after Inglorious Bastards. I don't know. Yeah, right. But uh, yeah, mm. bloody Hollywood. You know what I mean? More like Hollywood. More like Hollywood. Here's a here's a fun fact because I read a I read I was in a doctor's office and I read a, an article from several years ago about Candace Bergen, Murphy Brown. Yeah, okay. You remember Murphy oh, Brown? Of course I do. Well, she they're bringing and, that back. Are they? Well, they have. Okay, right. I don't know. Okay. Well, she used to live with a uh, uh, a man named Terry Melcher. Okay. Uh, and who was, I believe, a record executive, a uh, record producer. Yeah. And then they moved out of that house and Sharon Tate moved in. And then Sharon Tate was murdered by Charles Manson's followers. Oh. And the, 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 the implication seems to have been, also, people dispute it, people that go back and forth on it, that Charles Manson murdered Sharon Tate to send a message to Terry Melcher because Charles Manson was knocked back for a record deal. Because again, he was one of those. Wasn't lunatic. this also tied into the Beach Boys? Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Something? Uh, one of the Wilsons, I yeah. think. Yeah. Uh huh. So isn't that isn't that isn't that bloody something? That bloody is something. That is something. I've just got the actually the, the guy who plays uh, Bruce Lee, Mike Mo. I I looked up his stuff on YouTube where he's yes. just doing various martial artings. Oh, so he's a he's, he's a, 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 yeah he's a real martial artist guy. He's he's very good. So, uh, what have we got here? I'll, I'll give you some more names. Do you think he? Okay, the, without the Bruce Lee. Hair and the sunglasses. Yeah, that does a lot of the work. Does he look anything like Bruce Lee? Not really, but these vo- the, the voice that he's doing yeah, is pretty right. uh-huh. bloody dead on. Yeah, right. Uh, so Margot Robbie, Al Pacino, Dakota Fanning, uh, Bruce Stern, Emil Hirsch, uh, Luke Perry, who recently, this will be his yeah, last right. role. Scoot McNary. Scoot McNary's back. Yeah, so... Uh, Wait, was he the man with no legs? In yeah, the man, man with, with no legs. Superman. Okay, yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of really great names in this. Terrific. So I'm, re- I'm really hoping it's good. Does and it look we'll- like he's going to res- resurrect anyone's career in this one? I would say Luke Perry probably would have been the... Um, yeah, right. Probably the one... To g- I mean, not, not that Luke Perry was... Oh, maybe Emil Hirsch. He's kind of quiet. Yeah. He's not... Like, it's not Since a... Since Speed Racer. Yeah, it's not a dead career for him. He's been no, working. True. But uh, Bruce Dern... Who's that again? He's an old man. Is he related to Laura Dern? He probably is. He probably is, right? He, More like Holly Weird. Yeah, that's what I said. Holly Weird coincidences. Let me check. I'm also uh, a couple look. second on Laura was also an actor. Yes. Oh. Unless it's a different Laura Dern. Unless it's a different, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. cool. Cool. Okay. That sounds all good. Mason, it's story time. It's oh, ad time, it's story time. Oh, I love it. Wait a second. So, so when my parents told me stories back in the day, were they just advertisements? <laughs> they were just advertisements. Oh no! So the fairies that went off to Coca Cola Land—they <laughs> that was just that was oh no. That's right. Wow. Oh man. And the three little bears. That porridge was a, a brand of porridge. I couldn't think of a brand of porridge. <laughs> it doesn't matter, Mason, mm-hmm. because once upon a time in 2009, two guys set out to make the perfect tea. A tea that's like an old favourite from day one, perfectly broken in and absurdly soft. The names were Mike and Adam. Now, remember those names, Mason. Uh, is it significant? Nah, you don't need to remember. <laughs> I was going to say. But the thing about it is, because uh, they created Marine Layer, and what they did with their first batch of, of teas that they bought, they got an, uh, an old V-dub bus to transport them. So they were feeling pretty good about their investment. But nine, le- nine years later, well, 10 years now, and a few credit cards, t- two buses later, they built a brand around these absurdly soft Shirts, but not only. Ha- did- what do you think happened to the buses? That's a good question. Do you think they drove them off cliffs? Do you reckon they did? I reckon they did. Yeah, <laughs> that's, the cool, that's the cool part of the story. They did, they did but, it Thelma and Louise style. Right. They were on the run from the cops because their t-shirts were too good, too good, and too, too soft, too value for money. The cops were <laughs> after them, so they're like, "Well, better drive this off a cliff." Uh, they don't only really make t-shirts though. Now they've branched out into, into Henleys jackets, pants, and sweaters. You get it. It's all designed uh, in the Marine Layer Workshop in San Francisco, and it's all really soft. Now they're so soft, Mason. I'm wearing one right now. You are wearing it. A delightful Henley right now. It's so great, Claire. Hugs me more that I'm wearing this. This is not an <laughs> exaggeration at all. At all, yeah. She's like, "Ooh, so soft," and I'm Ooh, like, "It is very." I good. mean, I am. She's like, "Not you, the the shirt." <laughs> she, can, can you she, leave me in a room with the shirt, yeah, please? Put it Take on your a, shirt off now. Leave. <laughs> put it on a pillow. Get mm. out. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so what, what have you got of theirs? Oh, I got a, I got a pair of jeans. I thought I'd try out the pair of jeans. I got the jeans. They're very. They're very. Did you nice. buy those jeans in addition to more, uh, clothes that you bought? 
Yes, initially, okay. They gave us a little. They gave us a little. Uh, they gave us a little per diem. They gave us mm. a little, a couple of credits towards buying some stuff. But I'm like, I, I'm going to buy some more stuff because it looks good. So I got a pair of jeans. I got a little bit of stretch in them, which is nice. That is good. For, when I'm, for when I'm feeling chunky. Yeah, I hear you, mate. Got a little bit of stretch in them. They're very nice. And I got a, I got a tee, which is very soft. They would not lie. Mm. I would also chase them in their van. <laughs> and I got like a, like a, like a terry cloth sweatshirt, which is real. That's my, that's my pick of the bunch. The softest sort of of all. Yeah, it's like wearing a towel. A terry towel? <laughs> a terry towel, Very exactly. Good. It's like wearing a it's like wearing a terry cloth robe in public, except yes. acceptable. <laughs> It's very good. Now, the thing is, these softest teas, they're made from trees, micromodal, which is made from uh, recycled beech wood, uh, which is crazy. The pulp production is self-sufficient, so they make teas sustainable, eco-friendly, and you guessed it, soft. Uh, they also have in-between side sizes like margin larger <laughs> for dudes who just don't conform to standards, and the re- return policy is great. Uh, you can return pretty much anything for up to a year. Bloody hell. Yeah. Plus, they offer free shipping and free returns for on all U.S. Orders. Very good. Yeah. Okay, here we go. We've actually got 15% off your first order if you visit Marine Layer. That's M A R I N E Layer and enter promo code Weekly Planet, all one word, at checkout. That's marinelayer.com. Enter promo code Weekly Planet at checkout. Nice. And check them out. Check them out. <laughs> Before checkout. they drive all this stuff off a, off a cliff again. Chased by police. Chased by the police. Their clothes are too good. <laughs> yes. Uh, trailers also for one trailer for Stranger Things Season 3. Yes. They're all grown up. It's not the 80s anymore. No. It's still the 80s. It's the late but 80s. But it's, it's later in the it's 80s. later in the 80s. And the friends aren't as much friends anymore. They can't be Ghostbusters anymore. They've got to be a... Serious adults and grown ups. Yeah. yeah. But there's also a monster. Yes. And maybe the dimension is, hasn't finished coming into their dimension. <laughs> hasn't finished dimensioning yes. yet. Do you think we're going to have some sort of satisfying do you, do you think this is going to be do you think it's going to be three and done or do you think it's going to be we're going to drag this out for as long as humanly possible i kind of hope it's three and done me too yeah i liked two uh mm. not as much as one because I, yeah. I think the side plot of uh the new x-men the new x-men yeah, right. kids uh-huh. that they kind of went and, uh-huh. which was fine i didn't actually hate it to be fair i don't hate but, that episode either but, I, know, uh, I know that a lot of people uh, going into that a lot of people were like episode seven or whatever it was this is the this is real this is ruined it kind of thing yeah. and i'm like no this is Take a chance, you know. Yeah, it's absolutely. Fine. And yeah. I think it's you know, there's a there would have been, if people had responded well to that, I'd imagine there would have been a spin off already yeah. there happening. Yeah. yeah. But uh, no, I don't know whether this is the last one, but there's a different monster. Yes. And is it a conspiracy? That's what I've written here. Is it? It seems to be a conspiracy because there's, there seems to be a lot of guns with silencers on them. Yeah, that, then that, you know it's a conspiracy. That points to conspiracy, I think, because you want to shoot somebody but make it a bit shush shush. You know? Right. <laughs> you know? Shh. Hush. 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 Yeah. Don't tell anybody the secret. Don't do it. When is this out? Are you going to tell some of the secrets? You are. Pew, 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 pew. Shh. Pew, pew. Shh. <laughs> you know? When does this debut? I know it says in the trailer. Yeah. Uh, let me check. A that. lot of people have suggested that this monster that July we see 4. in the trailer is one of the kids, I think. It feels like it could go that way, especially the one who was trapped in the dimension, but the yeah. dimension that wanted to be our dimension. Yes. Get out of our fucking dimension, yeah. man. Yeah. Take your shit. Back yeah. to your dimension, exactly. your weird goopy trees and, yeah. your, and your bug men. We fuck off. We grew here. <laughs> you you also grew here, but in a different way, in like a like a goopy kind of creepy way. You know, don't don't do it. <laughs> We've had it up to here with you, but I will absolutely watch this. We've had it up to here with you, and also down from there with you because your dimension's upside down. <laughs> so right. we've had it up and also wherever down. it needs to be. Yeah, that's where we are. Stick to there for you. Yeah, yeah. I wonder whether this will wrap up after this, though. I hope so. Um, I want I want some answers. I think. What do we need to know? Yeah, they, well, that's also it. I <laughs> what, don't see. That's what do you thing. want? I don't know because I want wh- where this. Because that's what answers could I possibly get? Where did the dimension come from? It was just there. I yeah, guess. it was always there. Yeah, but where did, did they build their own? Bad Seven Elevens or whatever. Yeah. So I mean, exactly. Like, I guess maybe the the question is. Was it spawned from our dimension? Yeah. Was it created and then flipped upside down? Yeah. Or like when they opened it, it kind of created it. Yeah. Did, yeah. did did someone on Earth yeah. create the dimension? If so, who? If so, who? And don't don't. <laughs> it's, a, it's a conspiracy. <laughs> because why is it like? Why is the other dimension like a ruined Earth? Yeah. City, you know, kind of thing. Good questions. It all is a good, they are a good question. Is it the future? Could be the future. Could be the That's future. actually a good point. Yeah. It could be a post-apocalyptic situation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, Bad I could definitely- 7-Elevens. 
Which is to say 7-Elevens. <laughs> they're okay. They're, they're very convenient, aren't they? <laughs> they're, 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 they're the epitome of a convenience store. Definitely, okay? yeah. yeah. And they're not even 7 to 11 anymore. They're 24 hours 24 a day. 24 7 Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Here we go. Uh, this is more for me. Dog's back in the sun. Yeah. You love that dog. That's good for you. Yeah. Stay away from John Wick's dog, though. That's right. Uh, dog, dog. dog. <laughs> <laughs> Just check the tag. If it says dog, dog, you're in trouble. Back away. Uh, Supernatural will end after 15 seasons. I, was, which... I wrote that down for you. I'm Thank like, you. Just in I case you missed that. that somehow. I would never. Was there a sad video where they were like, guys, listen. There was. I didn't had... watch it. <laughs> exactly. If it's not on YouTube, or even if it is on... Okay, here's the deal. If it doesn't... If it doesn't come up in my recommended YouTube, like when I open the app or yeah. I open, put, it, to put it on my TV, if it doesn't come up immediately, I'm not it's watching gone. it. It's gone. Yeah. But so they were like, guys, we've had a good run. Yeah. But we've done this for 15 years. There's been too many. I can't, what, 2005 this started or whatever it is? So, yeah, right. Which is crazy. We were so much younger then. And so were they. And yet they look the same and we look <laughs> worse. What's that about? Hollywood. It's Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. It's holly, holly weird, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so I hope these guys go on to do other things because I always felt like they were both very good yeah, and right, continue uh-huh. to be very good in these roles. Uh-huh. I could easily see one as a Green Lantern or a, or a Nightwing yeah, or, or a whatever. Red Hood. I think or Jensen, Red Hood. I think Jensen Ackles was. dressed up as Red Hood for Halloween all And the time. he voiced him in the Red Hood movie. That's true, he did, yeah. So, yeah, there's definitely room for that. Uh, but I would also hope that you'd be okay with them just doing nothing after this. Yeah, sure, what if they wanted do? to do that, that's fine also. <laughs> this is, a, is this a network show? This is like a... It's CW. Okay, right. It's one of the longest running yeah. CW shows. I get the sense that if you do this show for 15 years, you probably have the money to not do anything else 100%, ever again. So yeah. 100%. If they, I, yeah, if they're like, listen, I'm never doing anything again, I'd be like, of course. Yeah. So... Now, I, I dropped off probably four or five seasons ago, but it's always okay. my plan to go back. Yeah, and I, now you can. And now I can and I will. I think this is going to be... I mean, this this could very well be one of those ones where I, I know a lot of people are like, especially on the Planet Broadcasting Facebook group, have sure. said, uh, now that it's d- going to be done, I can start on this. Yes. Where it's like, okay, now that I know it has a definitive end point, mm. I, can, I can go through and, and knock it all off. And I think it, for me, the, the pinnacle was season five, and then there's a couple after that which I don't love but then it does oh. it brings in inst- interesting elements of does other... it recycle some I mean they all die yeah. and come back obviously a but... lot of kind of like in the first season it teaches you the rules where it's like okay if you want to kill a ghost you find the body and you burn the body and then yeah, the right, ghost uh-huh. explodes and then in season two it's like we, we burnt the body but the ghost is still here well, oh, it's, a, it's a magic ghost yeah. <laughs> not a magic ghost <laughs> God, what's that even yeah but then there's like a lock of its hair in a in a basement somewhere that they got to find or yeah, whatever. Right, so okay, they uh-huh. once they establish all the rules, they never kill a thing really like that again because it's yeah, always right. like another wrinkle to get it okay. done. Do they become like? Do they become like Ghostbusters in the sense it becomes just like a blue collar like? Oh, it's a bit of that, ghosts. but it's more kind of like hell's gonna spill over to the earth and the angels are really a bunch of dickheads. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. And you know, is that God? I don't know. I'm not up to that bit yet. <laughs> okay, if it's right. God or not. But. <laughs> But no, it's great. It's a good show. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, here's, I forgot to put this in, but I just remembered. Uh, Batman is apparently, the Batman will be set in the 90s. Nice. Because I guess if it's a prequel, if it even is, because the Suicide Squad is a reboot, but the Joker movie is not in the regular DC Correct, universe. Yes. Do you think maybe they saw Where... the box office success of Captain Marvel and went, 90s, 90s, baby. 90s will do it. I'd, I'd say they'd probably already planned it to be. Yeah, right. Because I know a lot of people, including us, were like, well, Aquaman's a lot, a lot like Black Panther. Uh-huh. But you have to, you, yeah. you're so far along. Before. And I guess also, like, the, certain things get in the zeitgeist. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, okay, well, the 90s, you know, it's, it's, it's rolling in and it there's is. nothing you can do about Kids it. Kids in the 90s are now working in, in Hollywood, yeah. mate. But I would like to see, like, I would like to see a scene where, like, Batman, you know, Bruce Wayne's in his, in his, in his chair and he's sitting there and he's like, he's done all his training. He's like, Criminals are a superstitious and cowardly lot. How can I make them fear? Mm. And then like a blind melon CD crashes through the <laughs> through his window and he's like, I should become this is it. I should become the band Blind Melon. <laughs> Does he have to replace one of the members? Is he all of the members? What are we what are yeah, we he talking alternates, about? Yeah. Okay, he good. switches in and out. Okay. I all these sch- all these crime fighting sch- <laughs> schemes involve him. Like quickly switching out of the outfits of various members of Blind Melon, which is probably pretty easy because it's always just different flannel shirts. And I want a Hey Jealousy montage. Yeah. I don't care when or how. Okay, that's just not Blind Melon. It. No, I know. Okay, cool. No, it's just the 90s. Okay. I want a Breakfast at Tiffany's Ugh. brunch. Uh, all right. 
<laughs> okay, I can see that in the nineties. Yeah, that's okay. I Do don't think to... I don't think they're gonna lean too hard into the. Remember this shit? Yeah, right. Oh. I feel like the Batman movies don't really. Yeah, but that I mean that will also put paid to like your theory. Which one? The the Burton universe is the. Oh the, no, that no? I was gonna say put it's gonna put paid to something that I feel like maybe has been overdone at this point. Like I think maybe the MCU has like brought it to its biggest like it's it's overkill point where everything's a floating hologram screen yes you know like everything's just in the air i love lots of tvs instead yeah exactly heaps of tvs heaps of tvs instead yes I f- how many did he have in batman returns like one or two yeah and a v and a vcr whatever he had in that <laughs> yes yeah yeah uh-huh good on him yeah, we want heaps of tvs uh last bit of news toy story 4 got a trailer uh how does Woody feel about growing up and being a toy? And yeah, uh-huh. is Andy? No, he's not. But there's a new, there's a girl, and yeah, uh-huh. why can't you just be a toy for what's, once? What's Bo Peep up to? She left. She's, in, she's, a, a, she's a, in a, she's like a, she's a carnival fight, fighter. Fighter, or something. yeah. All right, yeah. Uh-huh. I'm not. <laughs> I like these movies a yes. lot, but I'm like, this feels very familiar. Uh-huh. I should give it the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, right. But it's a lot of like, the most important thing in the world is make a kid happy for. For four years, <laughs> yes. and then they'll forget you forever. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. I like the idea of building a toy. Like, but did Forky. you feel? Did you feel as as cynical for Toy Story three? No, not oh, after okay, I saw right. the trailer. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, but the, look, I, again, benefit of the doubt. But a lot of the creatives from Pixar have moved on for various reasons. Yes. Uh, but I know that a lot of the team there, I think, now do the Disney regular three D animated stuff, like your Frozen's and whatever, oh, okay, sure, which right. I think are also. I don't think now there's that much of a difference between that and like classic Pixar stuff. That's true, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Like the because there was an era when it's like, what about Disney's Bolt? It's a stunt dog voiced by John Travolta. What? <laughs> what do you mean? And why? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> just, just don't. Send that back to the whatever hell dimension it came from. Send that back to Zenu's house. All right. <laughs> So, yeah, but no, this trailer, again, benefit of the doubt, the whole cast is back. I like the idea that she built a toy and it became sentient. Yeah. I enjoy that. Uh-huh. Uh, but, yeah. Interesting we didn't see that before. No. Mm, but Not it's, that interesting. It, mm, it is interesting. It builds on the lore. Yes. But I, 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 anything else? We'll see it. We'll do an episode. We'll see it and do an episode. Yeah. Mason, Will Anderson, we mentioned him up top. Uh, he's, a, he's actually a friend of the show. Friend a friend of, of ours, Mason. Yes, that's Funny right. story, though. I actually met... No, he's a friend of the show. He's not a friend of us. <laughs> yes. I met him. <laughs> I saw him the other day. He was hanging out with the show. And I'm like, what a minute. What do you... What do you... Why didn't you invite me? <laughs> he is notoriously one of the nicest men in comedy also. Absolutely. We've, we met him independently of the, him uh, having TOEFOP on Planet Broadcasting with That's Charlie Corson, yeah. who's been on the show also. But I did uh, some work, work experience on the Gruen transfer like 10 years ago. Uh-huh. And I met him briefly and he was very nice. And I was, you know, he could have <laughs> thrown a coffee at me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if absolutely. He to. But he, he, was, he was super nice and he continues to be. Yeah. A nicest man, hardest working man in, in comedy, I would say. You better believe it. And he's actually back with a new show from March 27th until April 21st in the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Tickets on sale at comedy.com.au. Uh, you might know him from Willos- Willosophy, which is a great mm-hmm. podcast. Tofop. Two guys, Two guys, one, guys one, cup. one cup. Other various podcasts so that he has podcasts, been on and yeah. done. Also, of course, The Gruen Transfer, which is a fantastic show on the ABC. Uh, he was on The Glass House. That is no longer He's a show. He's on Triple M's Breakfast He's Show, Triple- The Whole Breakfast. That's right. He does it all. And the thing is, I haven't seen this new show, but I did see his last one, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I am going to see the show because why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't I? Also, these sell out very quickly. They're yeah. always they're big venues, ha- but they sell out. They, yeah. They're always uh-huh. packed houses. Yeah. Occasionally, somebody will ask him, "Do you, are you ever going to run of Will themed puns for your show?" He's got like fifty more. Oh, he's ready. I've to seen go. the list. <laughs> he could live forever, yeah, or right. at least fifty years. You know it. Yeah, that's fantastic. Got a review here though. Uh, a master, it's five stars. A master class in comedy. He may be one of the biggest comedy exports, our biggest comedy exports, with a national profile on radio and television. But flying solo on stage is where Anderson truly shines. The man is on fire. You have better believe it. That's right. So you're literally on fire. Li- You've got to see that. He does it every night. That's his closer. That's it. So that's, my- <laughs> that's look. The jokes were really good, but also, how does he do that <laughs> every night? Every night. That's Will Informed, March twenty seventh till April twenty first. Highly recommended. Absolutely. Absolutely. Check it out. Yeah. I can't believe they're paying us to do this ad because I would happily do this We would have done it for free, yeah. I think, yeah. So, yeah. Will Anderson, if you're listening, you don't have to pay us for this. We'll just do it. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. On with the show. Yes. Uh, now, we can't do Us this week. It is out. Yes. Uh, because 
uh, it's not out here yet. Please, no spoilers for people who have... Don't send the spoilers. Seen it. Same with the... Um, we, we had an opportunity to see Shazam on Friday. I had a wedding, uh, yep. not my own. I'm only going to do that once, hopefully. No matter what happens, I'm only doing it once. <laughs> and I couldn't get up. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm a little poorly. But there's already information about what the post credits are and yeah, whatever. Right. We, we don't want that. <laughs> no, that's do not true. tell us yeah. if you can. Uh, but we'll, we'll, if you can just about be, get, take it back. Yeah. <laughs> get rid of it. I'll prob- we'll probably get spoiled in a headline that's like, can you believe Hawkman's in the, in the yeah, post credits right. or uh-huh. whatever? But yeah, people could. But people are generally pretty good about that. A lot of the time when we get spoiled, it's just because people assume that we've seen. Or they're or very presume, enthusiastic, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Which is good, but yeah. no. But so next week we'll do us. Also, I'm getting my gallbladder out this week. Uh-huh. Uh, so I might not be around next week. I'm, I'll probably be fine. It's yeah. just a uh-huh. surgery that's not apparently that big a deal. And we're auctioning off your gallbladder for charity. That's right. So. You want a, want a, just a weird gross bag filled with 10 rocks? <laughs> you can have it. It's medical waste, right? They can't give it to you. I want one of the stones. I'm yeah, definitely right. going to uh-huh. ask. Yeah. And then it will sit next to me on this desk. That's right. <laughs> Slowly melding with the desk. I just want to see it. I don't want it. Just to go, yeah. fuck me. <laughs> is this... I mean, this is probably questions for outside the podcast. No. Is it, is, it a, is it a local anesthetic? Do they just... They put you under whatever that one is. Oh, so a general anesthetic. Yeah, and it's okay. keyhole. They go through your belly button. There's a few... And there's a few cuts they make under your ribcage. And, oh, okay, and right. they yank it out. They yank it right out. Yes. So they can't like... They can't just put you a, a, like in a like a local anesthetic. They can't just numb your tum, as no. it were, and then take the like the stone out and show it to you. No, which <laughs> yeah. I would prefer yes. because we talked about this briefly before the show. This is not comic book movie related. There's time codes if you want to skip ahead. But uh, if you want to hear <laughs> about how boy, fear about surgery, yeah. time coded. Because the last time I've only done it once, and when I got my wisdom teeth out like ten plus years ago, when you're out, you're there's, just gone. There's nothing. There's nothing. Yeah. So if yeah. I go under. And I don't come out for whatever reason. Yep. I'm just like, was that it? Like, is there nothing? <laughs> no. Just infinite nothing? Yeah. So look, patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies if I die. So you can support, <laughs> my, so I can support my family from beyond the grave. Wow. But I'm, nah, it'll be, it's not a big deal. You'll be fine. <laughs> They've done tons of these. <laughs> yeah, Do you exactly. want me to be in the, in the theater, Please. operating theater? Wake him up! I'll, make be, sure re- I'll be ready with clamps. <laughs> yeah, good. And guns to make sure they wake me up. That's right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't want that because I'm on a hair trigger at all times. I'll be like, gun to the gun to the guy's head, and I'll be like, if you don't wake him up, and then somebody will come through the door and I'll bang, and I'm like, oh, can we get another anaesthetist real quick? We've oh no, what have we done? Mm. You done? Yeah, not me. No, nah, what you? Done. You encouraged this. <laughs> I did. Uh, Hellboy. Uh, we're, yeah. we're going to talk about the Hellboy movies, the the two that we've got, not the yes. third one, which apparently was. Guillermo del Toro. Yes. How do you say it again? I always get it I wrong. I say Guillermo, but I think I'm still incorrect. Well, it's closer than I am. Mm. Uh, said it was always... He decided to walk away from this. So it was kind of his choice to kind of move what, on. after two? Yeah, that was the... Yeah, oh, right. re- more recently. Uh-huh. But he decided... So that's why they... Th- and then it went to Lionsgate, and Lionsgate are now doing the new version, which is... I can't remember what story. There's a popular Hellboy story that they've adapted. I can't remember what it is. Oh, it's Hellboy fights the chicken-footed house. <laughs> Is the chicken, Volumes 1 and 2. Is the chicken, they're really packing it in. I think they're going to take a lot of the essential story elements out of it because you can't compact that in the two hours. I don't... Th- yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's adapting the unadaptable. Exactly. Is the chicken still in the house? We'll find out <laughs> right. when we see it. Uh-huh. But no, these movies are... The, there's two, there was two previous movies, 2000 and 2000, 2004 and 2008. Yes. Uh, they didn't do... This first one in particular didn't do super well. I'm kind of surprised it got a sequel. I think it must have done well on Blu-ray or DVD or whatever. Because uh-huh. the first one made $99 million on a $66 million budget. Okay. So it must have been home sales which got this yeah, right, over uh-huh. the line. Yeah. Uh, that feels like... But that also feels like they maybe they were hoping it to be like a Resident Evil style franchise where they make just... They make enough m- money... Right. Unless the, the they Resident go bigger in the second one. Oh though. yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah. So it, like, or maybe the Resident Evil franchise makes tons of money. I don't know, but like, it feels like maybe one of those. They were like, they were aiming for one of those franchises where it's like, well, they make more. They make more than it costs to make. Yes. So let's just keep them rolling until they stop yep. making money, right. and then we'll just you know mm. quietly kill it. We've had a few discussions about this during the week because yes. we we're supposed to do it last week. What um, how do you feel about these now that it's been? <laughs> X number of years. Well, it has been X number of years. Uh, look, I still think they're good. Agreed. I, th- I, but I think I had this revelation on the drive over here. Okay. The second one is feels quite Men in Black ish, and then 
as I was driving over here, I thought about it. I'm like, wait a sec. I thought these were cool, like indie, like I thought they were like cool indie left of center action movies. Yeah. But I, I'm like, did they just make these to cash in on Men in Black? Is that what happened? Is that are these just that's entirely are these possible? Just car- Men in Black carbon copies. I think they mostly out Men in Black, Men in Black for the most yeah, part. Yeah, I think they do. Yeah. There's the more the first one, characters. first Men in Black is great, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah. I definitely, I think, see, I feel more that way about the first one because the, we'll be jumping around a bit in this and yeah, spoilers, right. uh-huh. uh, but go watch them as well. I think maybe it's now. also like there are certain, there are certain visual aspects to the Men in Black universe and the, and the Hellboy universe that I think they just have to, they, they inherently share just because of like. The nature of the secret agency. The nature of the secrecy and the nature of the, the monsters. Where yeah, it's like, right. if you've got a tentacle monster, you're gonna be it's going to be flinging people about. Yes. And like that was that feels like a very much a trope of the Men in Black universe. Like you see a background monster. Yeah. People are just, just having a chat. And, and then, then they're, they're just a, flinging agents yeah. about. Like we got that a lot in Hellboy 2, I think. Yeah. I think maybe that's just a function of, well, if it's sci-fi and kind of supernaturally Cthulhu-ish yep. aliens, we're going to get a lot gonna of that, that maybe, yeah. But the first one, because we've got that point of view character who disappears in between movies. Yeah, he gets reassigned. And I think they put him in because cause it's weird having like a 50-year-old man in a demon costume <laughs> being the <laughs> right. lead. Um, uh-huh. like maybe they got cold feet on that. Or maybe he's a very popular character from the comics. I don't believe so. He wouldn't be more popular than Hellboy. But he's definitely our window in. No, he's cause... way more popular than Hellboy, haven't you? <laughs> There's 50 issues of that guy. It's called, it's called that guy from the BPRD who got reassigned in the second movie. But when he enters the facility, there's the keep your hands inside the whatever. It's a secret elevator. He's walking yeah, through he it. And that feels Men in Black-ish yeah, uh-huh. as well. And he's, and he's kind of your window in to like, and there's this, this weird thing. And there's a fish man. There's a demon man. This girl can shoot fire uh-huh. and so on. Mm. But d- before that, though, there's, I, I think the... The intro, uh, the 1945 intro, or whatever it is, uh-huh. the flashback is, is really is really quite good. I agree. Where it's Rasputin summoning a weird tentacle Cthulhu monster through yeah. a crystal or something. There's some clunky dialogue, and mm. it's in both of them. Yeah. The exact same thing, and which which I think comic book movie directors especially have sort of have, have leaned away from in the yeah. past, but it's definitely in this one where some guy, like you have to establish that he's got... You know that he's different, and he's got the right hand of doom. And yeah. one of the characters are like, "He's got a big rock in his hand." Yeah, and it's the not other a rock. Put, that is his hand. hand. That's in both movies. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's an easier way to do that. <laughs> You're probably right. He's got a big stone in his hand. You can't put it down. It's, you can't put his, put stone. Put it. Put down that stone that's in your I hand. It's my hand. I'm it better. is my hand, though. Mm, I can't do it. So it's also if we're talking early two thousands, early comic book stuff yeah it's got that fly through a bunch of stuff title x-men spider-man yes, it does, yeah. intro it does yeah. you know your things that i don't even remember what it is for hellboy just fire is it clockwork no it's it's fire it's there's a lot of fire and there's a bit of that and there's also a bit of there's a lot of newspaper clippings yeah of like who is the mysterious hellboy yes right we call okay. him hellboy who's the boy from hell who's that <laughs> tell us <laughs> he's got a broadway musical the boy from hell <laughs> What I think most of these movies do really well, though, I think is... more, is, is he a bat, is a bat boy and hell boy Are they in a relationship? Who knows? <laughs> There's always something like that. Yeah. But I think the, both of these movies do villains well. Yeah. Uh, the, the first one, Rasputin. I love the clockwork sand-filled Nazi. <laughs> I think that's such a cool villain. Yeah, right. The way he can kind of shut himself off and... Get uh-huh. into a facility and then he puts yeah. all his pieces back together mm-hmm. and yeah. he's just filled with sand and meanness. I enjoyed that we didn't get a full, we don't get a full origin of Rasputin. Like it's assumed we, the audience, are yeah. not idiots, and that you know Rasputin, we know somewhat as a historical figure, yes. and this is what he's become. Like he can, he he can't be killed. I also enjoyed the fact that we he didn't. I I enjoyed the fact that he is this unknowable evil and. A lot of the rules don't seem to apply to him. Yes. Like he can just he can just be like, okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna create this monster, and if the monster dies, there's two more. Like yeah. he can just do that. There's no there's seemingly no limit to his his yes. powers because he's a villain. That those rules don't apply to him anymore. I think the plan was also to bring him back for the third one. I think oh, I right, read, okay. read something uh-huh. about that. But I like he's that. riding the chicken feed house. <laughs> I'm back, bitches. <laughs> I like the resurrection of him through the blood. Temple, yeah, uh-huh. thing or whatever. But there's a lot of good. There's a lot yeah. of great imagery in yeah. this. I don't love the space Cthulhu. I love crystal. the space. I know. Cthulhu, I remember yeah. at the time because we yeah. saw this together, and we both 
on the same page not, not, but that we are now about that exact thing. We're like, yeah, it's just a big squid. No. And I know you... it's like a HG... What, not the HG? What the HG hell? Nelson. Yeah, HG. <laughs> Australian's Royal sport HG commentator. Zone, yeah. yeah. No, HP, HP Lovecraft, Lovecraft yeah. kind uh-huh. of situation. No, I, but, uh, I, I enjoyed the fact that they're, they're just throwing it all against the wall to see what sticks. Yes. And also that's out of copyright, so they can do that. They can do it. Although they didn't use Cthulhu specifically. No, they don't say that exact thing, but Rasputin's out of copyright. They do mention, <laughs> Cause though... Because he's that, real? Because he's real. Yeah. They do mention... He was never in copyright, ideally. Uh, if anybody could be in copyright, he could probably make it happen, yeah, you know right. what I mean? Uh-huh. But they do also mention that... Briefly, that he's a guy from the 19th century and they shot him and stabbed him and poisoned him and they burnt all his organs or whatever. They do <laughs> mention that in the in the movie, yes. briefly, but yeah. Uh, what do you think of the ca- the characterization, the makeup, the of, of, the the performance of Hellboy? How does that come together for you? Like, how does it stack up? I yeah. Mean, yeah, it, it's still still good, I think. I agree. Let me think. Does He doesn't, like, even in, like, HHD, he doesn't seem particularly styrofoamy. No. So, which and is there's good. a lot of him with his shirt off and fake muscles and fake chest or whatever, but yeah, it's, right. it all looks pretty convincing. I think it's better in two. Yeah. And I think uh-huh. his colours, uh, he's got a deeper red in two. I think that he's more orangey, I think, in the first one, I would say. Yeah. Uh-huh. But uh, Ron Perlman's great in this. And what an absolute bloody sport for... <laughs> <laughs> Submitting to however many hours of makeup. Oh, mate, this is, yeah. I, is there more shirtless stuff in this one than the other one? Uh, in the in the first one? Yeah. I think so, yeah. 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 But it's just, it's very impressive. And you've got to have this animatronic hand on. You've got a fact about that hand. I remember you telling Do me. Do I have fa- a fact about it? Is the fact which about hand the hand it was going to go well, on? Well, it's, it's a, traditionally in the, in, the, in, the, in the comic books, he's got the right hand of doom. Mm. Uh, and because he needs to fire a gun with a left hand. Yeah. And I think because Ron Perlman is right handed, yes. they were like. Well, do we want to make it the left hand of Doom and he can fire a gun with the right hand? Yeah. And they were like, well, people would be mad. But then he just was like... I or he is left-handed? Look, I don't know. <laughs> when you said fact. <laughs> Look, it was. It turned out fine, though. Turned, everything turned out fine. Yeah, but he's he's really great. And I, I having not seen the, the new one, you see a lot of Ron Perlman in it. And I don't, from the trailers of the new one, I don't know if I get that sense of, that's the bloody dude from Stranger Things or whatever. But this is... Oh, okay, you think, it's, you think it's David Harbour doing a Ron Perlman impression? Not necessarily, but I mean, you can see more Ron Perlman in this. Even just, just oh, in the I features. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, right, okay, right, But he right. just kind of looks more like a gruff demon man in, mm. in the new one. Again, right. having not seen it, so I, I don't <laughs> want to get on that too much. But yeah, he's like this, he, he feels comic book in size, but not too big. Yes, do you know uh-huh. what I mean? It's, yeah, right, it it uh-huh. feels like a real person in the world. Like there's yep. bits like they'll do a CGI hand bit where he'll crush a can or his yeah, tail right, uh-huh. CGI for doing or whatever. Did Hellboy one pioneer big dude punching a car and flipping it over his head? Was I was going to mention that. It's, that got, it's, got a, four trope? it's got a car flip or a truck flip. Every movie from like 2002 to 2014 <laughs> had a car or a truck or a bus. Terminator Genesis did it, flipping over a... A guy or whatever, because uh-huh. he stops it with a force field or he punches it or uh-huh. whatever. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Don't. <laughs> Just don't, all right? It's not impressive. Wait, I, I was oh, such a big fan, though, back in the day. Oh, yeah, definitely. And there's examples of it that have worked. I think, well, there's a truck flip. It's not really the same, but in The Dark Knight, where they really flip a truck. Yeah. And I'll take a, a real a truck real flip. A real truck flip, yeah. I'll take that exactly. any day of the yeah. week. But, yeah. There's Terminator a, 3, a real truck flip. It's a real truck flip. Okay, I'll say this about Hellboy. He does. Have you seen? Side note. Have you seen? It's on Twitter. I think there's a there's a new app called TikTok. I'm not aware of what it is. I is think it's people just... miming crap. No, I, th- I think maybe probably, but it's it's short videos. There's a video of Arnold Schwarzenegger on his, I guess his ranch. Or his farm, <laughs> I've seen this. And he's on a he's on an electric bike <laughs> and he's chasing a Shetland pony <laughs> around a field. <laughs> And, and he's not. I, just to be clear, the Shetland pony is clearly into it. Yeah, like it's clearly his pet Shetland pony, or whatever, or like whatever it is. And it's like, chase me, dad. It's you know? hilarious. <laughs> of course, he's got one of those. Of course, he does. Yeah. Oh, mate, that guy's up to so many things. He isn't is, he? Isn't he? Yeah. He was in Melbourne recently for the Look at My Muscles Challenge. He was at the. He was doing the Look at My Muscles Challenge. Yeah. yeah. So uh-huh. good on him. <laughs> that just because I'm right. Because Arnold didn't Arnold Schwarzenegger pay for some of the stunts in. Did he pay with his he own did, money? He did, yeah. Or? But there is a there is a CGI truck flip in that movie, but it's not someone standing in front of it. But yeah, there's a bit where a crane goes through the front of the That's building. That's right, yes. Uh-huh. And he he wanted he did it for they want to do it for real. Or he wanted to do it for real. Uh Hellboy quips too much when he should move. 
move to run, move <laughs> or to shoot. Yeah, He's right. Like, What's uh-huh. this then? This hardly uh-huh. feels like I don't like. Yep. Don't you know? Uh huh. <laughs> but I mean, you would do that given that you are a guy who se- is seemingly completely indestructible. Okay, fair point. And, and he does at the end of the that I guess. I think that, that Hellboy, the Hellboy movies are more about spectacle than they are about danger, really. Okay, sure. Because at the end of the first Hellboy, uh, Rasputin is defeated and he dies, but then the the the, the dark, the, the old god creature that's within him and I guess is, is powering him yeah. escapes and turns into a giant tentacle monster. Uh, and Hellboy just leaps into his mouth with like a dozen hand grenades, right. and it just explodes, and he's fine. Yeah, that's a good point. So you know, yeah, it was more. It, it was this. The Hell, Hellboy one is more about the journey than the destination. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, he does have a good journey through these films. Like Liz, I feel yeah, right. uh-huh. does. Because by the time the second movie rolls around, she does have the handle on her powers. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. Their, their relationship moves along enough where she's like, don't be an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Don't. You, just don't. Just don't, Hellboy. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Is that some, is the, his, is the, is the trans, is the transition from her producing blue flame to, to orange flame? Yeah, is what that, is that? Is that thematically or is it more difficult to do? Oh, like CGI was. Yeah, right. Does she have the blue flame at the end of the first one? Yes, yeah, she does. Okay, and then that's what they bring up in the next one, or is it orange in the second? It's one? orange in the second one. Oh, I don't know what that is. Maybe no. she can just do either because yeah. she's got the powers of. Uh huh. No, that's interesting. No, Maybe one was cheaper. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she's obviously been lying low because she's got MS, and she showed up recently for the um, Oscars, which was great. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see her do more stuff. Me too. Yeah. Obviously, she's been lying low for a reason, but. I think there's a way, if they had have done a third one, of bringing her back and making it work. Yes. There's ways you can film around an actor that, or you make it part of the character. Yeah, you right. You know what I mean? Like, look, look what, when Michael J. Fox works, they make it work. That's true, yeah. You know? So, it, yeah, I'd like to see her turn up in more things. Mm. Uh, Abe Sapien is a bloody gosh darn marvel of, <laughs> yes. of prosthetics and, uh-huh. and CGI blinking eyes and performance. I really yeah. like the David Hyde Pierce voice in the first one, uh-huh. which he didn't get, which he chose not to be credited for because Doug, Doug Jones was the one who got all the fish stuff stuck to him. Sometimes he'd wear <laughs> it overnight because it was easier than taking oh, it off. Oh boy, that guy! The stuff that he has put himself through. Yeah, right. Incredible, but I love that character. Uh, and and Guillermo del Toro clearly loved him as well. Yeah, I feel like did well. You were saying that Guillermo del Toro. GDT, yeah. let's call him GDT. GDT, baby. Uh, do you think he, when you say he walked away from the Hellboy franchise, did yeah. you say because he was just done with it? Or? I think he was just done, I yeah. feel like maybe it was because he wanted to do the fish love story. <laughs> because Hellboy 2, and I'd forgotten until we recently rewatched yes. this, has has the fish love story in it. Yes, it it's does. It's got a fish yeah. man love story in it. Yeah. And I feel like he wanted to do more with it and the studio were like, no, we can't do Hellboy 3. Uh, Abe Sapien has sex with a woman in the 50s, so you can't do this. And he's like, well, I'm going to do it on I'm my own. I'm going to do it, and then I'll, I'll do it on my own. Because a lot of people made the assumption that before seeing it, that Shape of Water was set in the Hellboy universe, but it's not. It's it looks separate... like it could be. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. I think that's uh, why he moved on. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, and he won an Oscar. So... Anyway, so he was right to do so. Yeah. There is some wonky early... Isn't that interesting, though? What's that? That... Had he made a Hellboy 3, Abe Sapien has sex with a human woman. Yes. <laughs> that would never have won an Oscar. Absolutely Never in not. a billion no years. Way. Because it was genre and based on a comic book. Yes. And and there would have been too many shooty action sequences. Yeah. No, even if it was the, the most amazing you know, ro- romance ever set to, yep. to, to film, yeah. it never would have won an Oscar. Because no. they would have been like, this is genre and stupid. Yeah. Even though, look, and The Shape of Water is great. I'm, I'm uh-huh. glad it won because it's... It's so weird. And stuff like that doesn't really <laughs> yeah, it doesn't anything, generally yeah. win, but uh-huh. no, I'm glad that kind of do went away. Do you think do you think it was uh do you think it was a, a career what do you call it? What do you do you think it was a uh like lifetime a achievement award? Yeah. Like do you think it was uh, a, maybe did, what did, did Pan's Labyrinth win anything? I don't believe so. Yeah, well, or maybe, maybe it did win like best international film yeah, or, or something. Best, yeah, or best special effects or editing or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. It might may very well. Well, cuz a lot of the, his previous work does flow over into this, particularly the weird world building and animatronic stuff. The one, there's some wonky CGI in this. We talking Hellboy too? No, no, the first Hellboy. Oh, yes. uh-huh. the, um, there's a monster that's there's a moment where a thing uh, like there's a sand thing that kind of. Oh yes, I for can't sure. remember uh-huh. the uh-huh. bit. I'm t- I wrote it down. I can't remember <laughs> okay, it specifically. Uh-huh. There's a bit where he crushes the Red Bull can, and it's clearly a fake can <laughs> right. and a fake and a fake hand. Uh-huh. And I've also written here the love story is weird because it is. He kind of follows. The girl that he likes around, and then eventually she's like, "All oh, right, 
<laughs> That's true, yeah. I mean, he obviously, uh-huh. she obviously is supposed to really love him, but it's a bit kind of... It's a bit of a weird dynamic. Yeah, it's right. Because right. she's kind of like, just leave me alone because I, I burst into flames. Mm. And he's like, give me a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> kiss my baby. Yeah. And exactly, like it seems the, the only... In the the only commonality that they have is they're both fireproof. Yes. And he's like, come on, we're both fireproof, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Uh, Pan's Labyrinth won three Academy Awards. Okay, good. <laughs> Which ones? Let's find out. Doopy doopy doop. Best special effects. Uh, it won best. best best cinematography. Yep. Best art direction, best makeup. Okay. And it was nominated for best original score, but it did not win. Well, but it but it was it won those ones. Yes, correct. <laughs> I've never seen it. Please don't email me. Okay. I've been planning to. I have seen. Don't it. Don't email me, Mason. Okay. Yeah. Can I email you for other reasons? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. As long as it's not related to that. Uh, yeah. So there's a, the, a couple of anim- animatronic stuff, other stuff that I really like. Uh, the the monster that he fights that can be multiple monsters. Yes. Uh huh. There's bits where it's maybe not filmed super well, like it's a bit flat and puppety. Uh-huh. But I think the blend between it being a CGI thing that's kicked through a wall and being a real thing in the physical space is is good. Yeah, I, I know. I, at no point was like, well, this is. Yeah, that's obviously. It's got like all eyes on one side of its head or whatever's yeah. going on there, yeah. and and I love that. It doesn't look super convincing, but I love the chatting skeleton that he carries around <laughs> on the <laughs> noose. Uh-huh. It's just like, dark, dark, yeah. dark. well, that's straight out of the comic books. Yes. That's, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that, even though it's clearly a puppet. <laughs> like it's not it's not proportioned like a human like it yeah but he's he's you know he's uh i know i'm but i love it i'm yeah. i'm i'm 100 percent on board yeah. yeah and that that again that that to me that i enjoy i enjoy i think i enjoy the first one more because it's got more of that just that mishmash of weirdness yeah like it's elder gods and it's like okay i've got a you know i've got a i've got a bone from a saint and i can use that to to yeah, temporarily like that. bring back a, a a corpse or what have you like it's it's just Imagine all the weirdness of this. Of you know, imagine all the the myths and legends. You know what? They're all true. Yeah, I, I very much enjoy any kind of universe like that. And uh, to me, the Golden Army didn't. And again, it, I don't know. I guess it is a similar mishmash. But I think it it felt very much like Guillermo wanted to just do his own thing, and they they would only let him do it through the lens of a franchise character that was already proven. Like right. you, I feel like you could take kind of you could take Hellboy and the BPRD out of Hellboy Two. Okay, just yeah. if you it was just a regular person figuring out this universe, it would still mostly be fine. Like a national treasure situation. Like a national treasure situation, exactly. Well, I think he's got skills more than whatever the character's name in National Treasure is called. Okay, good. Nicholas Cage. Nick Jump a lot. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> Nick Nicholas, Jump around. Nicholas Jump a lot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot of agents get killed in this in Rasputin's tomb. I really enjoy Rasputin's tomb. I love the swinging pendulum taking out the bridge. As yes. In, uh-huh. I remember that in the trailer uh-huh. as well. That's something that's stuck in my mind. A lot of agents get mashed. They really do. He becomes friends with Jeffrey Tambor and they smoke cigars together. Yes. They're like, ha, uh-huh. ha, ha. We've got some things in common, don't we? Yeah. We're both bald. Yeah, there's, there's very little... There's very little uh, concern for the the agent, the other agent's welfare. Yeah, Hellboy seems a little bit sad that one of them is killed in the first one. But they do with the hair plugs. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. for the rest of it, he's just kind of like the rest of that movie and the other movies. There's just a series of dudes in suits who get chewed to pieces by various monsters, <laughs> and we all just move on. Yeah, exactly. I guess, the, but to some degree, it's like, well, that's what they signed up for. But on the other, on the other hand, it's like, well, you knew these things existed. Yes. Send him in like a hazardous environment suit or something. Exactly. Don't, don't yeah. send him in like a and you, like a two piece. And you work with suit. them. You see them every day. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. yeah. Just put him in a put him in a diving suit or something. Yes. You know. Do you think the new movie's going to do the break the horns? I'm not. I'm a... just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. If you know that they're tooth fairies, this is the second one. Yes. Get them out of there. Get them out of there. Get them, don't just don't. Don't don't send them in. You've got a six shooter. Yeah, it's and not there's enough a bullets. million of them. There's a million of them, <laughs> and also, how do you hit? Try and hit a bird with. Try and hit a really fun. <laughs> try and hit a finch with a handgun. Good luck. <laughs> I'm sure people will message you and say, "Well, actually, it's technically possible." Okay. <laughs> sure, it is. And then also, the finch is trying to eat your face, and there's a thousand of them. <laughs> A finch is trying to get directly into your mouth to eat your teeth and then the rest of your body and you have to shoot it with a handgun. <laughs> good luck. Do you think in the new one there's going to be the break the horns? I'm a good guy. Yes. Because you see in the trailer he's got yeah, the... Yeah, absolutely there is. Yeah. yeah. I think maybe this is for a... 
maybe a younger audience who hasn't seen the previous two. Right, yeah. yeah. We're still recording, just... just I don't know. Look, okay. we'll just keep going. Okay, we'll just keep going. And if it doesn't work... It's just a new space and I'm concerned that maybe <laughs> no, no. you haven't, you haven't dotted keep the it I's right. and crossed the T's. I'll keep it an eye on it. Okay, yeah, right. keep an eye on it. Okay. I think I found the right level with the aircon as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, great. Is it good for you? Yeah. Okay, Could great. Could be a little colder. Oh, Jesus. Fine. Here we go. Yeah. I, I put it up. Uh, thank you, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. Not a sponsor yet. It's just a car we've parked in the roof. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a car we've parked. It's a car we've parked in the garage with just the ignitions on. <laughs> we're feeling very, we're very, we're feeling very cool and lightheaded. You yeah, know? man. Feeling great. I get it. Just breathe in every once in a while. I'm feeling good. Me too. Mm. Should we get right into two though? Let's get into two. I think it's better, but you I think, think it's wrong. not as good. I think yeah. you're wrong, but yeah. I think it. I think it strays too far. I don't think it opens as well, unless. And I'm just going to check really quickly yeah. because we're going to get emails. Unless it's based directly on a Hellboy comic book that I haven't read. Like maybe I missed a volume. But it's let's... entirely possible. Yes. Actually, maybe I, I don't think it is. I think it might have been made up for the movie. It is yeah. weird that they, sh- they have the 1955 John Hurt flashback because he's killed in the first yeah, one right, by uh-huh. the Sand Nazi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who's got no eyelids or... Uh-huh. That's right. The, that's the bit. The sand, the sand Nazi man... When you see his eyes and he's got no eyelids, yes. it looks like CGI eyeballs uh, kind of okay, googling right, right, around right, in his you, head. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. Uh-huh. But it's the, the the opening of that movie is set in 1955. Yeah, an with, army with base. young Hellboy. Yeah, but it's, kid Hellboy, which I like. Boy Hellboy. Boy Hellboy. Yes. Boy Boy. Yes. But uh, this John Hurt is now like because the, we see young John Hurt in the first movie, and he's like a 25 year old man. Yeah, right. And right. then. Ten years later, he's John Hurt. He's, he's, he's John Hurt older than John Hurt <laughs> yes. from the first Hellboy, but with darker hair. With yes. darker hair, yeah. I mean, I guess if you stand next to a demon for ten years, that's, that's what it does probably, to you. That's probably true, yeah. But yeah, it's, I guess it's kind of nice to, 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 um, to get him back. This one made $160 million on an $85 million budget. That's much better. Yeah, I You'd think, think that they'd do a three, yeah. But it's still not amazing, which again makes me think, for them to even consider it, it must have had a good home release. Yeah, for uh, sure. Situation. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, you yeah. You get that. You get that David. That Blu-ray combo. You get these two, <laughs> and you get the one where Ryan Reynolds and Jeff Bridges fight. R.I.P. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yes, absolutely. You get those get two. Those, yeah. Yeah, those all those together. Okay. Okay. Making of notes. Yep. Uh, Guillermo del Toro and Mike Mignola, creator of Hellboy, uh, spent a few days adapting uh, the almost colossus storyline from Hellboy, which okay. has which has a character called uh, Roger the Homunculus. Um, then they found it easier to create an original story based on folklore because Del Toro was planning on p- uh, making Pan's Labyrinth and Mignola's comics were becoming increasingly based on mythology. So they sort of right, combined the okay. two. Um, I think it works. I, look, I think it mostly works. Having, you know what? I think maybe to me it was kind of jarring when I went in. I'm like, this is a lot of, there's a lot of golden stuff and elves in this. Clockwork uh, men and pointed uh, ears? I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, Mignola described the theme of the sequel. The focus is more on the folklore and fairy tale aspect of Hellboys. It's not Nazis, machines and mad scientists, but the old gods and characters who have been kind of shoved out of our world. Yeah. I get it. It feels God of War-ish in that way, the it's new one. Have you God. played the new God of War? No. I know you played Doom. Yeah. Maybe we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. Uh, I really love the elf prince in this. I love the performance. Uh-huh. I love the fighting style. I love the makeup. It's uh-huh. Luke Goss. And I'm like, who is this guy? Yeah. But he's the guy who's the he's the new Statham in the Death Race sequels. Oh right. Like that's pretty much. <laughs> okay. But I feel like from this, yeah, this guy should be in more things. He's so good in this. Like he really feel like he's fighting for his people uh-huh. and he's dangerous and he loves his sister, but he's he's mean and you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, right. I, I think he's really I think he's really great. I think you just relate though, because you're also fighting for your people, podcasters. I love my sister. Yep, exactly. The dog. The dog. Because <laughs> exactly. I don't really have a sister. That's right. Yeah. But no, I think he's really good. And mm. so is the... Um, yeah, yeah, so he's an English actor. I wrote this down. I forgot to write this. Former drummer in the late 80s band Bros. 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 <laughs> Bros, yes. Yeah, sorry. Bros, yeah. Not bros. <laughs> it's, it, well, it's spelt bros, yeah. all right? You remember bros? I don't. When will I Oh, that's them. be famous? In 2008, Hellboy 2. That's when he'll be famous. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And also, yeah, so he's in the Death Race sequels and the Tekken movie, which I did not know there was a, a Tekken movie. <laughs> I was aware of it. Movie. Yeah. Uh, Liz is back. She's pregnant. Uh, yeah. That's a big plot point of this movie. What's it like to be a dad? We'll never know. 
<laughs> because it ends. Yeah, that I'd ends forgotten. On a freeze frame. I'd forgotten this ended on a this ended on a, a a cliffhanger of sorts. Yeah, that that uh, Liz is pregnant with two Hellboy twins. Yes. Yeah. Is that that's probably from the comics, right? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I got to read some Hellboy, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I love the the troll market stuff in this. There's more weird boogly creatures and uh-huh. he fights that giant monster with a metal hand on a chain I know, and like I've, smashes its Luke hand. Luke Goss. Luke Goss, Luke man. Luke Goss. He's in bros. <laughs> He's in bros. <laughs> He's in Blade 2. Is he? Yeah. Which kind of spiky-faced vampire is he in that? I don't know. Yeah, interesting. Probably a bald one because he himself is bald. Could be it, but he's not bald in this. Maybe he wears a wig and blade too. We don't know. Yeah. What are you up to, Luke Goss? That's right. Is there going to be a bros reunion? I think there has been recently. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they try. Because, you know, uh, it, maybe it's like a... Um, Maybe it's like a Demi Moore situation. Oh, okay. Where she was Demi Moore for, yes. for 20 years and then she was Demi Moore. Yeah. Maybe it's like, yeah, we're bros now. <laughs> Deal with it. We've got a, we've got a gritty rebranding. We're bros now. <laughs> I would enjoy that very much. Uh, I, I remember seeing this the first time. The transition to Doug, Doug, to Doug Jones's Jug voice. Jones. To Doug Jones. It's a little jarring. Jughead Jones. Jughead Jones. Yeah. It's a little jarring, but he's great. He's still... You kind of settle into it pretty quickly, I yeah. found anyway. And it makes sense that he would voice it things as he does. That's true. Everything yeah. else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Mm. Uh-huh. Uh, do, you, do you like the offhanded comment that Myers, that's his name, I've written it down here, yes. uh, was transfer, transferred to Antarctica? Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's gone. Yeah, it's good. He's it's good. bloody out of here. Yeah. I don't know how, I don't know about this reveal to the world, the world doesn't like him storyline. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Does it make right? it less interesting that if everybody knows him and. And there's a moment. There's a moment where he's like protecting a baby and she's yeah. like, don't hurt my baby. Yeah. And he's like, I'm not, here's your baby. And she's like, don't take my baby. And yeah. he's like, I'm literally giving you your baby back. I do also feel like he could have put that baby down much earlier. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> like on, because the, the, there's a scene where he fights the giant plant. Which I love. Yeah. Don't like the squid, love uh-huh. the plant. The last, the last plant, the last of his kind. kind of Elemental like, or something? Yeah, the last, yeah. the last plant elemental, I guess. And, and he, he fights him while holding a baby and also hanging off the side of a building. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you could definitely have just put the baby on top of the building. Yep. Well within your reach. Definitely. You climbed like, up there with the baby. You At one point, you fling the baby in the air. Yes. That's going to do lasting damage to a baby. Do not fling a never baby. Never fling a baby. Yeah. Never ever. Even I know that. Even you of As all Someone who will never touch a baby. Yeah. <laughs> because you know why? Because I'm afraid I'll fling it. <laughs> I've been too easily influenced by... by, by Holly Weird. Holly Weird. Yeah. That I'm like, well, look, I've got a... I've got to put this thing in the microwave. I better fling the baby while I do it. <laughs> then I'll just I'll put the I'll put the put, put this the, popcorn in. Put the popcorn in the microwave. I will close it. And then I'll catch the baby. <laughs> don't do it. It's dangerous. It's just long, don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's long landed. Just don't. Yeah. Uh, but you know what I do like? What's uh, that? Johan Kraus. We, oh, voiced by Seth MacFarlane. Seth MacFarlane. I had no <laughs> idea. Yeah. So. It's a it's fully a guy in a suit with his head hidden. I assume, <laughs> right? Yes, because it, because the top they've made it look like he doesn't have the top part of his head. I like to think that it isn't that. It's one of those wacky, inflatable waving inflatable <laughs> right. arm men. <laughs> like, and they literally just pump it up before every scene. I and would they also hope would, for the best. Yeah, they have it wave its arms and then just dub it over the top. Yeah, but I thought he was a really interesting and fun addition. Yeah, see, that's yeah. I enjoyed that as well, and that I think that is that's the. That's going back to like mad scientists and Nazis and what have you. Yep. Like he seems he's a, he's a man who experimented on himself several steps too far and became like a, an ectoplasm yeah. man. Yeah, don't you don't just don't <laughs> just don't. I mean, it's too late, but I mean, yeah, it's you, you don't cry over spilt milk or ectoplasm. Just, no, just don't do just it. Just don't do it. Yeah, I I like the things like uh, when they go to the troll market and they use more kind of tech. He's got the glasses so he can see the troll lady. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's other little things I can't even think of another example, but there's bits and pieces in this movie that are like, oh, that's a fun little addition. But you're right though; it is more. It's probably less magicy than the first one. Than like, like less, less, less. Less like this is a bone that resurrects the yeah, whatever. It's the sorcery. Yeah. Or just we're in a magical realm. Yeah. I do like the blade where you get the blade in you and then you can't. It's going to go into your heart because don't touch it. Oh yes, uh huh. But I feel like that elf king only beat him because he was drunk. Because it comes <laughs> yes. off the back of Hellboy and uh, Fishman Magoo. Yes. Getting very. They get so get sourced, get don't they? Yeah. Absolutely wasted. Claire's always loved that scene where they're sourced and they're singing. She finds that really funny. <laughs> but uh, 
And yeah, he, so he was half cut. Yeah, that because do, the next yeah. time they fight, and then fully cut. They fully with a sword. cut. Yeah, the next time they fight, he's uh-huh. he's he's much more sober. And there, there we get another cliffhanger where, in that uh, we go we go to the Moors, I guess, and and we encounter that Pan's Labyrinth esque demon figure. Yeah, who's like I can save you, I can save Hellboy, but he's going to destroy the whole world. And she's like, fine. Whatever. We'll figure we'll find out what's gonna happen with this in the sequel. Yeah. Never again. Never again. Mm. They'll probably continue it in a comic. Yes. That I that I'll be I'll begrudgingly read. Yeah, right. Like, well, guess. I mean there are the Hellboy comics. No, I mean they... in this universe oh, in particular. I see, right. uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh so yeah, that, that demon angel thing with the big plate on its head or whatever. Yeah. That's uh-huh. that's a real guy in there. It might even be Doug Jones. I don't know that for a fact. Oh. But yeah. But I really enjoy... They just, they just put more makeup and foam over the top of his existing... <laughs> They're like, well, we could take the Abe Sap- Sapien makeup off, but it's going to take hours. He's like, just put another layer Never, on me. I don't care. I don't care anymore. Just bury me in this shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think the finale in this is better than the first one. I love the Room of Cogs slash the Golden Army. Yeah, and the right. gas man gets in one. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And they're all... I felt it was a bit laboured, but I guess the point of that scene is that you can't defeat them ultimately. You could do it forever yeah. and a day. That's right. But they're going to come back. And then that where he's jumping in between the cogs and uh-huh. he's fighting Luke Goss. Yes. We know now from the band bros. From the, the band back. bros. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> band bros. Yes. Yeah. They're band bros. Band bros. Uh-huh. But it is, it is kind of, it's an uplifting, fun, what's going to happen next ending that we will probably never see. Correct. The sequel too, which yeah. is a shame. Would but you... again, what? Just, you know, where we'll find it, James? In our imaginations. I don't want to look there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> don't make me. <laughs> you try and it's just like a list of bills you have to pay. <laughs> oh. <sighs> oh, council rates. Ugh. Anyway, uh, all in all, Hellboy 1 and 2. Good films. Agreed. Yeah. Go in expecting a little bit Men in Blackish. Yeah. Yeah. I think coming into this, if you hadn't seen them earlier, you might be like, this is a little hokey and a little dated. Mm. But I think overall, they're, they're quite good. And I, I do wonder if objectively, yeah. with, this, with this new one coming out, based strictly off a Hellboy story, with yeah. a lot of the characters brought straight from the comics uh-huh. in their, the, for the way they normally are, uh-huh. I wonder how it would compare like this new reboot to say the first one. Well, we'll never know, will we? Well, I just think no, because I think like <laughs> in seeing the new one, I feel like there's always going to be an element of me like, well, it's I kind of like Ron Perlman. Yeah, you know? for sure, right, right, right. Which is kind of a shame for this new one, uh-huh. but uh, I'm hoping it's great. I really yeah. would love it to be great. I think I will come around. I recently rewatched Ant Man. Yes, first one, fun, fun film, <laughs> fun Ant Man, fun. I think I'm going to go into this. I, I think I know myself well enough at this point that I'm going to be like, well, it was it was a little bit different with Ron Perlman. I don't know if I'm, I mean it would have been great if we got Ron Perlman back. And I think the second one I'll be like, Ron who? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So in your face, Ron Perlman. You did a good job, but we don't care anymore. Don't care anymore. Also, we should point out he did reprise the role in a Make a Wish uh, video, or well, not just a video. He did it for the kid as well. <laughs> he wanted to meet Hellboy, so him and the kid oh, that's got the sweet. full Hellboy. That was the last time he was in the makeup. Uh-huh. Get up and oh, they, they also made up the kid. Yeah, made up the kid. Oh, yeah, that's fun. I don't think to the same extent, <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's really fun. We're gonna close up all your airways for ten hours. <laughs> Here we go. So yeah, could you could you put on that makeup for like months on end? And yes. Yeah, probably if it was, I mean, I'd be bad at the role. So uh-huh. I, I mean, if I was, if I was a good actor, then, which I'm <laughs> yeah. not, uh-huh. uh, you might see me doing a bit of bloody voice acting this uh-huh. week though. Oh, cause you're the new voice of Hellboy. I am. Wow. Hello everybody. Look out. This gun's got some bullets. Yep. <laughs> Is that a line from the movie? That's what he says. My gun's got some bullets. I like his guns. Yeah. He's got the big gun. The What's it called? The one that... The baby. He's got, wakes the, big, up the, ba- he's got the big baby. Big baby. And he's got the hand... The big yeah. hand gun. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I think... I I think I've had nightmares about not putting on any kind of Hollywood style makeup. Yeah. But I think getting molded for the makeup. Oh, yeah. Because I think these days... I think there was a there was a they had a breakthrough at one point. Yeah. Like a few years ago where they're like, yeah, we can just do it in segments and it's fine. But I believe... Up until a few years ago, it was just they put two straws up your nose yeah. and, and then just, they just cast your entire head yeah. and you had no like eyes covered, mouth covered, whatever. Yep. And it's like... They went for lunch. Yeah, they went for... Because I have like... I, I get some clogged... I get a clogged schnoz from time to time. Yeah, probably. I'd die in there. You'd die. Yeah. I don't and, I'd be, and I'd be too polite to, to, to just tear it off. Just I'd be like, oh, this is setting and I'm going to die. But 
This is expensive. I want to make a scene. The, 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 the casting people are going to get mad at me, so... <laughs> They can't put a mouth hole and kind of You'd hope so. get a rough idea of yeah, how, right. to, how to do yeah. it in the final thing. Yeah, I don't know. Because the mould is normally for a bust, which they then build off. Yeah, right. That's I the general I don't know. idea. Well, Whatever. anyway, it's never going to happen, so we'll I don't see. have to worry. We'll see. Unless we want to do it for video content. I wouldn't do it for that. No, I wouldn't do it I either. wouldn't do it for all the tea in China. Oh, no, I would. I'd be so rich. Be so I'd have rich. all their tea you can and I'd keep it. it. Oh. I'd just keep it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, here we go. You know what it's time for? Uh, is it more time for more Luke Goss facts? Have you got some? Uh, he was born in Lewisham, London, the son of Carol and Alan Goss. Okay. Since That's hot Goss. It is hot Goss. Since 1994, he's been married to backing singer Shirley Lewis. Okay. He's worked with Elton John, George Michael, Luther Vandross, and many others. There's some names. They have a stepdaughter. They've moved permanently to Los Angeles, but still maintain a residence in London. Well, you'd have to, wouldn't you? Yes. For yes. Hollywood. And for, for bros reunions. Obviously. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's been in a lot of movies. Yeah, he's been around. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I love the effect where the, where the people die from that universe and they turn into like an ivory person. That was great, yeah. Great stuff. That's a great effect. Because like, you know they really made ivory people to do it. Like they would have made the actual... Yeah, okay, yeah. sure. Uh-huh. It's just a good kind of weird folklore kind of look. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Many more Luke Goss Goss. Uh, looks like he was on an episode of Fringe. It's a good show. Everyone loves that show. Never yeah. seen it. Okay, that's good. Uh, that's about it. Great. Yeah. And that's the tooth. That is the tooth. Tooth fairies. Yes. Good. You know what it's time for? What's it time for? What we're reading. Oh, what we're going to read. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? Yes. You bought Doom, Mason. I bought Doom. Yeah. People didn't think I had the guts to, I didn't to, think you'd do to it. buy Doom, but I did. I bought Doom. The only thing you like more than buying Doom is... Not having people hassle you for not buying Doom. That's correct, yes. Which is what would... Did you get people asking you before A lot of people tweeted. It? They said, buy Doom. Yeah. Get Doom. You're going to get Doom. So I got Doom. You got it pretty early in the week as well. I did. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to really get the Doom experience. Now, we didn't stipulate that you needed to play Doom. But I did play but Doom. you did play Doom. I did play Doom. <laughs> and? Update. It's good. I like yeah. it a lot. It's... um. In, what I like about it, actually, is that initially... Like the, the 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 place they sort of shove you into a certain play style, yep. which is not the way I would play a kind of this kind of shooter game. Which is I hang back yeah. and I'll look around corners and I'll snipe. Like I'll find a position. And a lot of new games are that as well. Yeah, right. It's and a lot I'll, of like duck behind this wall. Yeah, get your I'll, health back. I'll find some cover. I'll wait. Exactly. There's yeah. no there's no health regen. It's like an old school. Yeah. It's it's like old Doom. It's like but old like, Doom. But if you just do that, the monsters will find you and destroy you. Yeah. So like it it really encourages. And I I was initially hesitant, but then I'm like, no, this is good. Like you got to move. You've got to yeah. just get in there yeah. and just start t- ripping heads off. Because you get health and benefits. Health benefits. Yeah, you get health benefits from killing. So the <laughs> more right. you kill, they cancel your insurance yes. if you don't if you don't get in there and kill. Yeah. Oh man, it's good. It's, yeah. There's a uh, all the classic stuff's back. The shotty. The chainsaw. You're the same the guy. The launcher. Yeah. You're the same guy, presumably. No, I think you are, because you, yeah, you are. You I wait. got in. I got in. I very much got into the Doom lore. Oh yeah. Like the 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 history of Doom. Mm. And, uh, yeah. So you've been. So you were reading so, a lot of the. So you've been trapped in hell for a long time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. People don't like you there or whatever. That's so funny. you're not the Doom guy from Doom Three, which is a different different Doom. Doom yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to do some Doom stuff for the new Doom game. Maybe we won't talk about it because we're not a video game. <laughs> we could still well, talk we could about it. We could probably touch on it, but I'd like to do either the Doom movie, uh-huh. we, either of the Doom movies that are coming out, or uh-huh. the one that's out in the new one. Yeah. Doom Yeah. to video, whatever it's No, but it's, 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 um, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Will I finish it? Who knows? I haven't <laughs> finished it, uh, but it's not for lack of loving the game Doom. Yeah. Mm. I do think it, do you I do... enjoy the relentless metal soundtrack? Not so much, but it's Oh, really? Okay, <laughs> it's yeah. Fine. I find that I've found, to be fair, the play loop got a bit samey for me. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. And uh-huh. uh, I kind of dropped off a bit, but I, I'll probably finish it at some point. I think I will. Fi- I think I'll finish it just to get. I want to see like your cyber demons and your spider masterminds. Oh, yeah, and right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed that they. I like the updates. Yeah. yeah, I like the update. I enjoyed that they uh, they they remade all the a lot of the old old school monsters from the original, like just the imps. Yeah. And they've made them like really. Even even just them because they're like the second monster you fight. Yeah. They're like they can run and find cover. Yeah. And like snipe you from a distance. Yeah. And they, they, they get up on a thing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Totally. And they'll they'll run they'll retreat to a to a vantage point and attack mm. you and yeah. all that sort of stuff. 
Chainsaw's good as well. Agreed. Yeah. Anyway, that's my review of a game from three years ago. <laughs> God doom, it's good. Look forward to his review of Monkey Island 2 next week. Yeah, it's it's also good. I haven't played it recently, but it's, 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 it's still good. probably good. Um, do I have any more thoughts about Doom? Probably not. It's pretty sick. Just Doom if you yeah, can. Just Doom, yeah. Not Don't. I also doom. watched, speaking of things from 2016, okay. I also watched Colossal. Which oh, is that, the, I keep uh, seeing that on Netflix. Pop it's up. Uh, it's the the Anne Hathaway Jason Sudeikis movie about a uh, like a like a New York party girl who moves back to her hometown and then discovers that she has some sort of connection to like a monster, a gigantic monster that's destroying soul. And it's a metaphor. Korea. I think it's a metaphor. Have you I, seen it? I, you watched yeah, the whole yeah, thing. Sorry, I mean, I know you saw it. Sorry, yeah, you finished I it. I think it's. I think it's meant to be a metaphor about domestic abuse. Okay, but I'm not sure. I, d- I think maybe some wires got crossed in the production of that movie because it's not. It's not great. No, I, I, I liked it. I think. Okay. Anyway, that's my review of a movie wow. from from three years ago. Excellent. Uh, well, I've got a more recent thing that I could. Okay, discuss. I'm ready. Uh, we should do more comics. Because I read multiple comics every week and I feel like I don't talk about them Oh, I, talk, I, read, watch, I read a comic as well, but we can talk about it in a minute. Is it Criminal? It's not Criminal. Criminal is a Brian Michael Bendis comic. I'm aware of it. You, you do mean it's a Ed Brubaker comic? Yep. What are you... <laughs> Let me check. What are you thinking of? Yeah, you might. I think you're absolutely... I'm 100% right. It says, um, it says I'm right here. It doesn't say who it is. It just says James is right. No, it does not. I don't think that's true. I don't think it's it no. I don't think it's true at all. Is, it is Brad Bru- Ed Brubaker. Are you reading uh, all my hero- my heroes have always been junkies? Is that what you've been reading? No, I haven't read okay, that. Right. But Criminal is basically. I th- I believe it's more of an anthology thing, though. Some issues two and three tied tied together. Uh-huh. It's just some criminal activities, but two and three in particular are about a an old reti- uh, an old comic book artist who's grumpy and mean, but he's done some wonderful stuff in the past. But he's He's jaded and he has to, he's gone on this kind of adventure to re- recover some particular pages and you find uh-huh. out about his past and the yep. comic book industry and there's a lot of nods to like real world stuff and mm. it's great. And yeah. if you love Brian Michael Bendis' work, you might just love Ed Brubaker's <laughs> Criminal. Criminal. Okay, yeah, yeah, there's three issues at the moment. Good save. And they're long as well. That's like, like you very much, you, that, that strikes me as like, Somebody in like a high school exam who's read the wrong thing. Yes. Like the thing about what what's interesting about Macbeth is how similar it is to Hamlet. Yes. <laughs> and here's the themes of Hamlet. Yeah, that's it. Uh, no, uh, Ed Brubaker. People would know him from the the Captain America, yeah. uh, sort of death of Captain America storyline. Bucky's he, up. Yeah, he did a a series for Image called Sleeper, mm. which came before Criminal, which is kind of like it was about a, a, a super villain. It was like a like a a, a, f- a super powered man who ju- goes into like the criminal underworld, like the super villain underworld, like undercover to to undermine it, and then his handler disappears, and everybody thinks he's a villain for real, and kind of like oh, he has okay, to right. navigate that underworld. And then I think Criminal, which came afterwards, they were just Brubaker was just like, I don't want to do superhero stuff anymore. What I just if, want to do like the crime, crimes. the crime stuff gripped him. And I think he's like, well, I'm just going to do crime yeah. now. But there's one that came out quite recently called, or my, my heroes have always been junkies, which is, uh, which is the most recent uh, criminal thing, which I, I'm going to get into, which okay. looks pretty good. But I read a comic book, which I believe was recommended by uh, Levens and Siobhan on Serious Issues ah, podcast. It's called the terrible Elizabeth Dunn mm. versus the devils in suits. And it's based. The premise is, but it's a one shot, and there might. I think there might be some more coming later. The premise is I'm basically. Buy this right now. You should buy it right now. I am. So the I don't know if it's digital. I bought. I bought it for reals. I don't do that. Yeah, well, no, I do actually. Okay. So yeah. no, anyway, so the, basically, the premise is that uh, twenty years ago there was a man, and he met the devil, and he said, "Okay, I want to be rich and successful." The terrible. Uh, the terrible Elizabeth Dunn. D U M N. Okay. okay. Uh, and. He uh, he he meets the devil and he's like, I want to be you know rich and successful, and the devil's like, sure thing, but I'll give you 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 have to give me the soul of your firstborn son. Oh, boom. and then then twenty years later he comes to collect, and the dad's like, you can't have my son. How about you take my daughter instead? <laughs> right. So great. She's been preparing because she's she's like the black sheep of the family, and like he the this the 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 dad sells it to the devil in in the sense of like he's like they say she can't be tamed. Like she's so uh, she's so okay, terrible. Yeah. Like she's the black sheep of the family, and he's like, "I'm intriguing," but of course, she's 
you know, she's she's un, she's untamable and she doesn't want to borrow this and she's been like preparing for this moment. And oh, she, she knew it was coming. She knew it was coming. Yeah. And she's 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 sort of been preparing and she meets some other characters and it's it's a bloody good good old read. It doesn't look like I can get it digital. Oh, so I'm, I am gonna buy it. I should have just brought it over. Well, Mason, it's too <laughs> yeah. late for that. That is too late. If too wishes were kisses, we'd all be kissing each other, you know what I mean? <laughs> I get it. What <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Exactly. Wow. This this new <laughs> this this new setup where we're staring directly into each other's eyes. Is I think really, it's going to be good for the long term. I think it is going to be good for the long term. I think you've yeah we've drifted apart because I've been on the couch and you've been at the desk. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like couples who sleep in different. Separate exactly. Beds, yeah. I'll show up next week and you will have cut out like a foot <laughs> yeah. from the middle of the desk and it'll be shoved slightly closer. <laughs> All right, what are we? Uh, we, should, what are do, we should we do some letters? Do some yeah. Letters. If anybody has some comic book recommendations for us, I would like to hear. Oh, them. yeah, man. So, speaking of letters, uh, weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Please do. Let us know some recommendations for comic books because, or, you know, uh, serious issues, yeah. of course, covers all the, all the greats, all the good stuff. Yeah. Uh, but if you've got some rec- some kind of left field recommendations, old you, doesn't matter. Or even like, if you're like, Justice League's good now. We'll, we'll hear about it. I'm not, no. Nah. You're not going back? I'm not. Nah. Never going back to Justice League? Not at this All point. Right. Letters? Yes. Letters. The classic one was letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. You know, they're here right now, we're going to do letters. Quick no. side note. Yeah, Claire's the mum, mother-in-law's the here. mother-in-law's here and with a friend. Uh, we're, we're so out of the way, Mason. I know, right? Yeah. It's the best. They could be plotting to... To divorce you. No doubt. Probably and separating the beds as we speak. That's right, but you wouldn't know because we're here. We're here and we're luxuriating. Oh, this is what a man cave is all about. Mm. We should put some stuff in here. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, never. Okay. By the way, it's still a regular room. Mm. If you want to reach the show, as you said, as Mason said, uh, weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com or hashtag weeklyplanetpod on Twitter. Mm. Uh, a lot of people have requested this. Um, have you guys watched any of Love, Death, and Robots? If so, what are your guys' opinions? If not, you should. I haven't watched any of it yet. I've watched all of it. Yes. Uh, some good, some not as good. Okay. Uh, Define good, though. Like, What's good to you? Do you mean subjectively good? Or are you just like, this is poor animation? No, no none of the animation is poor. A lot of it is different styles. There is one live-action one okay. uh, with Topher Grace and Mary Elizabeth Winstead in it. Oh, okay, cool. Which is fun. Uh, there's a lot of like, I feel there's a lot of like... Well, this is for adults, so boobs, you know? Oh, yeah, nice. a, I feel like it's a bit kind of like you can... So they're the good ones. What they're the good the ones, ones, obviously, yeah. I'm not, I'm not inherently against that, but I feel like... What is? What are you, what's, oh, do you, what are you saying? Oh, you feel like it's a bit... Um... I mean, there's, there's plenty of dongs, too. You want to see oh, some great. dongs? Yeah, it's there's terrific. Of, Absolutely, yeah. But it, sure, but I just feel like it's like, well, but nudity and sex because So it's like salacious because for the... Because for the, yeah, we okay. can, you yeah, know, right. that kind of thing, but... No, I mean, like any anthology series, there's some I enjoy more than others. There's one in particular called Something Blue. I can't remember. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's about an artist who uh, is, developed this obsession with this particular shade of blue and putting it in his work oh. and on, a, on a larger and larger scale. And then you find out the reason for it at the end. That one I really in li- really liked. Uh-huh. All the Is uh, it a metaphor? Is he blue? Is he sad? Uh, no, it's okay. not. There's a literal explanation <laughs> oh, for it. Which, okay. Yeah. But, and, and again, if you don't like one, and I don't think any is of it, them... Does he look out his window one day and just the wall is... Like there's the, a, ne- the building next door is painted that colour and he's like, oh, yeah. that's That sounds right, yeah. yeah. But, no, so it's um it's it's a lot of uh, different stories. Okay. And some are better right. than others and some are spooky and some are fun. Do you feel, are, is it animatrixy? Yes. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. Good comparison. Okay. And some, uh, you know, some of this and some of that. So it's not all the one. It's not all the one animation house. No. Oh, I don't. I don't. It doesn't appear to be. I think it's David Fincher and Tim Miller. You know, Tim Miller. Okay. Who's, Deadpool. Tim Miller. Deadpool. Tim Miller. Who's uh behind a lot of this? But yeah, here we go. Ooh. What are you being bloody? No. What are you doing for letters? <laughs> what do I have for letters? Are you gonna watch it? Just quickly. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, this is from Mark Reed. Uh, hello, gents. That's us. We're gents. More like Mason Reed. because you're... I'm reading it. That's yep. correct, yes. Are there any movies that you're not Spelt a fan of? Spelled differently, probably. Yeah, no, R-E-I-D. You, you nailed it. It's like, yeah, you've read, it's like you've read this email already. <laughs> Are there any I movies that you're not a fan of, but you think the music main theme is great? I personally don't like Lord of the Rings. However, I enjoy that main theme. Fair. Yes. I, okay. Sunshine has an amazing theme because... Some people don't <laughs> but love you them. you love Sunshine. I know I do. Yes. We both think it's the best movie of all uh-huh. time. Yeah, right. But that theme has been used in a lot of trailers and uh-huh. <laughs> montages on YouTube of probably yes. the movie Passengers. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. Right. 
That's mm. interesting. Uh, I don't care for Iron Man three, but the Iron Man theme, the Iron Man three theme, so jazzy. I love so it. Jazzy. Bum 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 bum. I bum, 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 like bum. the P Diddy Godzilla song. <laughs> <laughs> right, that whole album's a real banger. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess uh, Tron. I don't really Tron Legacy. You love Tron Legacy. I love Tron Legacy. I don't yeah. hate it, but that's that a soundtrack bloody... is killer. Yeah, that's the best album Daft Punk's ever done. Really, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, John, I'm just putting in best movie soundtracks and seeing if we've got any that don't necessarily line up with the uh, Garden State. But people... Here's one that's almost certainly dated, but at the time, uh, the Spawn soundtrack. Oh, certainly, yeah. <laughs> which was something that I don't think has ever happened again, which is they it was just they got original collaborations from like metal dudes and electronica dudes and teamed them all up. Yeah, right. So yeah. That, yeah. Okay, the, yes. Do you want me to look up what's on that bloody thing? Yes. What's on it? Yes. I've immediately forgotten what you said. What was the name of the album? Spawn. Spawn, that's yes, the one. I couldn't okay. remember the name. Uh-huh. Spawn soundtrack. Let's see what we got. Filter and the Crystal Method is on there, obviously. Of course it is. might be a silver chair. Really? It might be a silver chair collab okay. on there. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, yep. Trip Like I Do, which yes. is the Filter Crystal yeah, Method. Right. Oh, yeah. uh, Hard Road Out of Hell by Sneaker Pimps and Marilyn Manson. Oh, so Satan. 90s. Yeah. Satan by Kirk Hammett and Orbital. <laughs> uh, Kick Out the PA. Kirk Hammett from Metallica. I assume so. No, it is. Uh, Kick Out the PA, which is Corn and Dust Brothers. Oh. Tiny Rubber Band, Moby and Butthole Surface. This is oh. the most 90s thing oh, I've ever seen. Oh, my God. Uh, from Who the Bell Tolls, Metallica and DJ Spooky. I know that one. Oh, Torn Apart, of... Stabbing Westwood and Josh Wink. Yeah, I know oh, that one. how many of these have held yeah. up? Probably none of them. Uh, oh. Skin Up, Pin Up by 808 State and Man Son. Oh, I remember Man Son. One Mar- Maybe from like Bristol or something. Yes. <laughs> one Man Army, The Prodigy, who recently yeah. uh, lead singer passed, and Tom Morello. Uh, Spawn, the Spawn song just called Spawn is Silverchair and Vitro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. T Force Strain, Henry Rollins and Goldie, Familiar, Incub- Incubus and DJ Greyboy. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you care about this? There's yeah, three more. Okay. Yeah. No remorse. I love DJ Greyboy. No remorse brackets, I want to die. Uh, <laughs> Slayer and Atari Teenage Riot. These oh. are all combinations of bands, yeah. A plane scrapped its belly on a. And then it that runs. being said, like I don't know how many of them were collab like collaborations in full like yeah like, right. Uh, Trip like I do is like there's there's like a version that is just I think the 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 Crystal Method version and it's pretty much the same right <laughs> so, okay yeah you know I think I think maybe it was a case of they got the 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 band in to do their thing and then they just added some meeps and moops over the top <laughs> yes you know. <laughs> Maybe uh, I'm wrong though. You're maybe, pro- I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was an entirely collaborative process. Maybe they all got to. Maybe every band got together. Yep. And they were like, okay, pick a number. <laughs> no, they they lined up the metal. Ba- they lined up all the the rock bands and they lined up all the electronic hip hop guys mm. like on different sides and they all got to pick. And this, so, so somebody in somebody in there got last pick. Oh. They're like, oh, I got Goldie. <laughs> oh. I was gonna actually say Goldie, but I couldn't remember if anything Goldie. I don't know much about Goldie. Uh-huh. Goldie, any good? It's fine. One of the best I hear. Yeah. Uh, a, a plane scrapped its belly on a sooty yellow moon by Soul Coughing and Ronnie Size. Oh, Ronnie Size. I don't know that. And <laughs> this is not a dream by Morphine and Apollo 440. Oh, Apollo 440. <laughs> <laughs> so that's definitively the okay, answer how about to the question. This? How about this? In future, we scrap. Look, new, new, new venue for the recording of the podcast. Gotcha. Every week after this, we scrap the letters segment and we just read out. We just read out a, like a music compilation from the nineties. We just go, "Oh my god!" Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Hey, jealousy! Oh my Jim god! Jim Blossom. Oh, Jim yeah. Blossoms. <laughs> there they are. Yeah, I'm just looking through Batman Forever. Has got a, Do you like that It's got soundtrack? some good stuff in there, man. I bet it does. It's yeah. got Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me. It does, that's true. By you 2 Yes. And... Let's have a Smashing Pumpkins song. It's got the one that goes... Dun, 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 dun. And it's got Kiss From a Rose, of course. Because it does, yeah. Which everybody <laughs> yeah. knows. Yeah. Uh, Nation of Eagles is written in. And okay. this entire Nation of Eagles has said... Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. After Cap Marvel had great success de-aging, do you think Disney will use de-aging extensively in other properties also, such as Indiana Jones? Do you think they de-age Harrison Ford to do another movie or two of Indy v. Nazis? I think they'd like to. Yeah. But again, I think, speaking of Captain Marvel, mm. again, and, and I think we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. Well, last week. A couple of weeks. When we did it. When we did it. 
it's not it's not important. Why am I banging on about it? Why am I dragging this Let's out? Let's stop. But the look was great, but the movement was not so great. You yeah. can tell that he's pushing seventy or whatever, whatever yes. age he is. Like you can you can put yeah you could I think you could very easily make you know Raiders era Harrison there's Ford. There's so much footage. Yeah, there's so much footage, with, and, and you could I think you'd make it look good. But can you can you make the action look good? Yeah, you know that's, that, that's a fair point. Unless unless I mean you could also just you could just get a young stuntman yeah. and paste Harrison. Well, can you can you paste can you paste a? I guess I mean I'm sure you can put paste someone a Harrison else's head Ford on face. Oh yeah, on, definitely. On body, they yeah. did it for Christopher yeah. Lee in like 2005 for Revenge yeah, of the yeah. Sith. So. I guess it might be a function of you go okay, you get the stuntman to do the stunt, then you get Harrison Ford to like lie on a green screen log yes. or whatever and make reaction <laughs> yeah. faces old Harrison Ford and then you youthify that yes but like the, that that is so many stages of disconnection yeah from what is ha- happening in the action sequence that maybe it's going to look weird well that being said a lot of the action sequences in the first Indian and in the, the three Indiana Jones or the yeah. four they're not Harrison Ford like yeah, he did right. a lot of it but there's a I can't, Vic Armstrong his name is uh-huh. Harrison Ford's stunt double most of that amazing stuff is him. Yeah, Especially right. Temple of Doom because he injured his back. Yeah. But like the stuff from leaping from the horse onto the, the tank, like yeah. that's Vic Armstrong. That's Vic Armstrong, right. There's yeah. a whole, like, so I just think just get a reasonably convincing stuntman. <laughs> yeah. And I guess a lot of it's hidden in editing. Yeah. But that's the thing, like these days people don't want, like I think people don't want stuff hidden in editing and they don't, they can kind of, kind of right. see through that. Like if you, if you see a, if you see somebody jumping from a horse to a tank and you can just see the back of their head, you're like, well, that's obviously not. Come him. on, mate. Come on. We want to see very old Harrison Ford, <laughs> Grumpy Gramps Harrison Ford, leaping from that horse to that tank. You Agreed. Know? Um, yeah. I think we'll probably get more of it. I don't know. I think they maybe should just recast if they're going to keep doing more. How They're not going to though, because I mean, but he'll how die. well did that work gonna, last time? Yeah, but he's going to die anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, you mean I that in a good way? I mean that in a good way. <laughs> oh, Thank boy. God, finally. Yeah. No, I mean as in you're going to continue the franchise probably anyway. Yeah, right. And he's quite old. Yes. So maybe it's just time to, to switch it out. Yeah, Anyway, sure. we'll find out after this very average Indiana Jones movie we're going to get in <laughs> two years or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we're probably going to get some DH stuff in it. We've talked about it before. I think you could yeah. do 70% modern day, 30%. Yeah, for sure. Past. Absolutely, yeah. Well, we, we've mentioned before, but I would like to see 30%... Uh, Nazi stuff. Yes. <laughs> that sounds bad. <laughs> that's also how we're going to outfit the, the, <laughs> yeah, this, right. the studio. <laughs> and 70% modern day with him hunting down Nazis. when Because the Nazis went on the run. There's a bunch of them escaped. Yeah, right. And there, there were there, uh-huh. people are still out there finding these 95-year-old I mean, men. That, 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 that means... But he can't like he's not a Nazi hunter. That would mean him pivoting to is is he just after an artifact? I think that it's maybe just they have? a thing that he missed at the time, and right. now he has to go and fix <laughs> yeah, that particular yeah, right. uh-huh. thing. He's yeah. got a wrong that needs to be writ- rewritten, right? Yeah, I get so. I get you. Read. Right. Yeah, it's got it's got to be readed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Sick. Sick. Well, but uh, you know, an overall t- overall trend though. I mean, it would only work for like beloved franchise stuff. I yeah, feel right. like there's no there's no point just taking an old actor and de-aging them for no reason. Yes, I agree. You know, I mean, you could you could get an old actor and go be like, and back in the past, remember when this happened? It would just just don't show that. Yeah, just, that's the cheaper option, isn't it? <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, just or, say he did it. <laughs> or just say he did it, or just get a younger actor yeah. to be the young version of them. We River don't, Phoenix. It, the good DH, you can bring back Reva Phoenix exactly. to be young Indiana Jones. Exactly, that's Get right. Get Sean William Flannery, to whatever his name is, to do the body. <laughs> yeah. The guy who played him in the, the show. Sean Patrick Flannery? Whatever, Mason. All right. I thought, okay. Are you yeah. like Stifler? Did Stifler do <laughs> Get it? him. Yeah. He's all right, Sean William Scott. What's he, he done do recently, I wonder? I don't know. Yeah. But if, remember that one movie with The Rock? Yeah, we yes. talk about it all the time. All the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no there's no reason, unless it's an iconic character that we've already seen young yeah. decades ago, there's no point. Agreed. So yeah. why waste the time and the money? Agreed. Unless it's just, just to see if we can. That's you know? right. Yeah. Okay, that's the show. Who's the worst? Oh. Who, who's a character you would, we would definitely not want to see de-aged? Definitely not? Or definitely do want to see de-aged, I wonder. Oh, man. I was just thinking young Anthony Hopkins. Just really de him. They for actually some did reason. that for um, Red Dragon. There's a little bit of de aging oh, okay. in that. Just a yeah, little right. bit. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, let me think. Do you want to see Bruce Willis, Young Die Hard? Yes. <laughs> young Die Hard, but, but like really, a really full, well, have a, a, <laughs> a really, really full head of hair. Just like, just like they de age him and he's like, 
don't give me a widow's peak. Give me like a... I want the whole thing. I want the whole thing. Just a flowing mullet. <laughs> you would too. Yeah. Give me the whole thing. Yeah. Give me the works. Exactly. <laughs> Bring the widow's peak back, Bruce Willis. I agree. Well, he doesn't yeah. have it though. No, that's true, yeah. So maybe you de-age him to 1997. Yeah, <laughs> so right, exactly. Yeah, to yeah, his, yeah. you know, to the that's fifth true, element yeah. era of hair. Did we talk about that, that apparently he only does one day of shooting on any given movie now? Any movie? Yeah. <laughs> Even if he's the lead? I, th- I don't know. But that's that's what I, I saw that on a, on a vlog at some point, and I think, and that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it Like does. if you don't, if you see his character on screen and you don't see his face, it's a double. Yeah. That's... That explains G.I. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> It explains most of his moves. I think maybe it's if he's not the lead, if he's like, if he's not top billing, his writer says, I'll do one day and that's it. Okay, fair enough. So, you know. Okay, good on him. Yeah, good on he's him. Just loving he's just loving the work. Just don't. <laughs> just don't, just Bruce, don't Willis. Bruce Willis. Just retire. <laughs> what do you need to, what do you need to keep doing? Does he have, does he, is he paying a huge divorce settlement still or something? I, I or can't imagine he to would. To Demi more? Well, these kids are grown to, up. So to bros more? <laughs> I can't imagine. No, so. you, you wouldn't think so. Because it isn't it depending on it. Because it's, it's after your kids grow up, isn't it? A lot of the time. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Apparently, it depends. Apparently, in Canada, yeah, the divorce settlement is you have to your the alimony payment is the amount of money you earned at the most successful year of your career. Holy hell, that is which is which makes sense if you're like an accountant yeah. or something because it's like well you went from you know. Seventy thousand dollars a year to seventy five thousand dollars a yeah. year, or whatever. So that's you know that's. But if you did a song on the Spawn soundtrack, exactly, you're gonna peak right there. Yeah, but that's you're what, goldie. That's, that's apparently what, exactly. That's apparently what happened to Brendan Fraser because oh. like he he you know at one year he made you know tens of millions of dollars because yeah. he's in the Mummy movies and whatever, and then you know his star dropped right off. But his divorce settlement's like we well, have to keep Too paying bad. as if you made ten million dollars. a they year. They should reassess that law. I think they should. Having a Dave Foley as well. He's also Canadian, I think. Dave, which one's he again? Dave Foley, the news radio a... guy. Yeah, news radio. The kids in the hall. Oh, he would have made a lot of money yeah. in that era. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's yeah. Good thing he did sky high. Yeah, this may not may not be true. I, I've read, I've heard this in interviews, but I don't know if that's with if Brendan it's still Fraser. True. Maybe having a Jim Carrey as well. Is he Canadian? Yes. Okay. Right. Did he ever get married though? Jenny McCarthy? Jenny McCarthy. I don't know if they were married. Okay. Let me just check if Jim Carrey's better I'm going to check married. Canadian divorce laws. Let's, All right. let's, let's do some Googling. He's 57. Yeah, that makes sense. He's been married twice, sorry. Oh. Uh, former comedy store waitress Melissa w- uh, Woma. Uh-huh. Uh, and also Dumb and Dumber co-star Lauren Holly. Yes. I wouldn't say Dumb and Dumber would be peak Jim Carrey, though. No. <laughs> also, he's probably an American citizen now. Maybe it's different. Yeah, maybe it's him. different, yeah. yeah. Also, I don't know what I'm talking about. So there you go. Mason, you know exactly what you're talking about. I know about. exactly what I'm talking about. I'm a Canadian divorce that's lawyer. Right, which is <laughs> That's my two qualifications. Podcaster, Canadian divorce lawyer. And this is also why you're the best at wrapping up the show. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because you always know. I always know all the things. Okay. <laughs> Article one of Canadian divorce law- lawyering. Thanks for listening, everyone. That's what you have to because because they're very polite. Thanks for listening and subscribing to yeah. our podcast. Telling a friend. Um, Thank God I got at least one week out of the new regular room before I'm killed in the, on the surgery table. Exactly. <laughs> but this oh. room was made possible by people supporting the show. Exactly. That's yeah. right. And, and telling a and friend. And you will see it. <laughs> yeah, you, will see, you will see it. That's yeah. true. We don't have any cameras in here yet, but we've yeah. got a lot of places to plug cameras in. Yeah, so oh boy, do we. It's going to yeah. be great. Uh, uh, and telling a friend, give us a nice review. That'll be great. That's yep. bloody, yep. bloody terrific. It's very helpful. Uh, if you want to uh, support the show... As James said, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies if you want to chuck in a buck. Chuck it in. Or if you want to go to Am- the Amazon affiliate link in our episode description by Hellboy 1 and 2. And R.I.P.D. Yes, in R.I.P.D. <laughs> the triple pack. It's a, it's a big box set in the shape of Jeff Bridges' face <laughs> in Hellboy makeup <laughs> for some reason. He was get really that. good about it. Or in fact, you can buy anything you were going to buy on Amazon.com anyway and we get a kickback somehow. That's right. Uh, if you want to get in contact with us, it's Weekly Planet Pod on Facebook and Gmail and Twitter and Bandcamp. I'm Wikipedia Brown on Twitter and I'm Nick Maso, uh, M-A-S-E-A-U on Instagram. Yes. You can to Sunday Movies everywhere. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Gmail. Nice. Instagram, Twitter. Terrific. Oh. If you want to go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group, join up there. We have all sorts of discussions about all sorts of stuff. Yeah, we do. Yeah, you can we also do. go to planetbroadcasting.com, sign up to the newsletter from the great Rob Collings. Yes. The great man. He is fantastic. All our comings and goings in the newsletter every yeah. week in your inbox. And he does so much in, uh, well, there's a number of people in the Great Mates group. 
uh-huh. that, are, that are doing great work there. Great if you need, if you need, there. if you need to know a very, very specific time code about something that happened on the podcast, he knows somehow. He does sound. He's not, no, and also you can put that in the. Uh, there's a Reddit group as well as a Weekly Planet Reddit, true, which yeah. uh-huh. we don't plug enough, but those are, there. are good people in there. So, Terrific. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, what else is happening? Don't spoil us for us. Don't spoil Shazam. Shazam Don't spoil for us. For us. Oh, I'm going to be part of a uh, quiz show during the comedy festival oh, called Big Deal. Okay, it's on at the Coopers Inn on the 30th of March at. I want to say 4 p.m. Okay. I don't know what's going to be happening. You want to say it. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to, it's apparently it's a quiz show from hell. I don't know what's happening. I don't want to get slimed. That's okay. all. That's all. That's all I know. Well, I hope you do get slimed. I don't want to get slimed though. Well, I hope you do. If I get slimed, I'm leaving. Yeah, well, fair enough. I'm going to take all the Weekly Planet listeners with me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's happening. We're going to a different pub. I'll be waiting at the front in a minibus. Thank you. <laughs> Or on We're a gonna mo- go on the neighbours no. tour. You know, yeah. We're gonna go on the neighbours tour minibus. Yeah, and by minibus I mean moped. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> with a sidecar. That's nice. <laughs> good. 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 Yeah. Uh, that's about it, I think. That's about oh, it. Thank you, the Brit and the Basilisk and Rack and Prolla musical yeah, themes. Man, yeah, yeah. We've got some t-shirts on tpublic.com. Get a T. See you at the show with a T on. Where we'll be wearing a T. Do it every day. Yes. Some days. Uh, what else? Are we we still selling those USB uh, best yep. of the weekly planet tapes. That's They're right. Great, uh, great guns. Oh, yeah, books on tape.com. They're not real cassettes. It's just made to look like it's that. It's made to look like a cassette. Just so you know, yeah, that's yeah. right. That's a good point, actually. Cool, cool. Yeah, nice. All right. And that's, that's the, show. the show, I think. Yeah. See you next week. Grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want.